great introduction. We like to have a little mood music before we get going. Yeah. Uh, welcome. This is the July 1st meeting of the Economic Development Commission of the United States. So thank you for being flexible in your schedule. And we decided we did not want to meet on July 4th um, for obvious reasons. We did not want to miss the fireworks. Um, although sometimes we have fireworks at our own meetings, right, John? Okay. Um, and so this is a meeting that uh, we have an agenda that's published both online and also here on the table. If you have any questions about what we're covering during the meeting, uh, please come on up and, and get a copy of the agenda. Um, we, let's just call the meeting call to order at 7.02. And we're expecting one person to call in from the EDC. We do have a quorum uh, if we just introduce ourselves from left to right uh, so that people in the audience and people at home know who we are. Um, Sally, why don't you start us uh, off? Sally Miller, I'm the coordinator for the economic development. <coughs> uh, Michael Malik, commissioner. Joe Dinatale. Uh Charlie Kimball, current chair. John Spector. <coughs> Larry Niles. Courtney Love. Terrific, thank you all. And so, uh, <coughs> before we get started into citizen comments, we do have something. Um, our table is minus one member who's been a member for a very long time and had served as co-chair uh, for at least a year, maybe even longer, but was really the backbone. Uh, someone who dived into the details uh, behind every request was unrelenting in his pursuit of factual information and how this reflected what the economic development priorities would be, and that is uh, Barry Millstone. So we want to thank Barry for his years of service. We have uh, produced a, a certificate uh, for you, actually, and uh, to thank you for all of your years of service. Thank you very much. Certificate, yes, it's official. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I should do this with the glass. Thanks. So thank you very much, Barry. And, um, you've, uh, I understand you've agreed to continue to serve on one of our committees. Uh -huh. Is that true? That's fantastic. We look forward to your continued input. Thank you. Uh, with that, we'll open up to the rest of the citizen comments that we have for this evening. Uh, and because this is a meeting in which we're reviewing grant applications that were presented at our last meeting, um, we are actually having a report from the Economic Resources Subcommittee on their deliberations of those meetings. So if you have an opinion or something you'd like to share about those applications, it now is actually the time to do it, not when we're actually hearing from the Economic Resources Subcommittee. So uh, we do have a number of, I think we had nine grant applications. So if there's something that you'd like to share with <coughs> us uh, uh, before we get started into the rest of the agenda, would love to hear from you. Mr. Kahn. Just a question about how that could work if, if the subcommittee says something or comes up with something that raises a question. Could you allow a small amount of participation? Uh, <coughs> well, uh, rather than saying something now before mm -hmm. they, that's been presented, you don't know what. And that information is actually posted on our website as well. Um, I believe it was in the Dropbox in preparation for yeah. the meeting, so it was posted on yeah. the website. It is posted on the website. Yeah, with all the details of the discussion of the Economic Resources Subcommittee. So it's really a, an opportunity for us to hear the deliberations of that group in order to make that recommendations to them. Because uh, you can imagine we've had a lot of comments, a lot of input already, and just mm -hmm. trying to figure out and get input now. <coughs> we know that we want to, oh, thank you, Macy. We know that we would like to revise the process to make it a little more intuitive uh, going forward, but this is kind of the process we had kind of subscribed to and presented and kind of stuck with for this one. Okay. Any input, thoughts? Okay, so the number three is additions to and deletions from the posted agenda. Uh, we do have a couple of additions to the agenda. One that we did not actually circulate, and I apologize, is this is the beginning of a new year for us. Uh, we said the chairmanship would rotate at uh, the beginning of uh, the fiscal year for the town, and today is the beginning of that fiscal year. Um, and so I would like to add that to the agenda for discussing a, an appointment of a new chair of the Economic Development Commission. Uh, 
Um, so, well, I, we don't have to discuss it now. We can discuss it. Yeah, it would be better to be discuss it now. Uh, actually, we can put it after the approval of minutes, so make it item number 4A, if it is amenable to the group. Is that amenable to the group? Okay, 4A. Thank you. Are there any other additions or deletions to the minute or to the agenda? Yeah, there needs to be. Sorry, can I go, go ahead. There yeah. needs to be one. We need to discuss the um, administrative support role, and I think that needs because that's a personnel issue. I think that it would be an executive session, but we would invite Sally to join that executive session because we need her input. Okay. For what again, John? I'm sorry. For the administrative, to, to finish our discussion of the administrative oh. role, we had a discussion in executive session last time. We would do that, I would not propose we do that at the end. It's, it's sure. not contentious. I think we just need to. So, um, if folks are open to that, I would take that up under other business. Is that uh, amenable? Because it's not new business, it really qualifies as other. Like old business. Yeah. Old business. I'm sorry. Old business. Old business, yeah. All right. Any other additions or deletions? Okay. Rarely do we have those. So this is really a monumental occasion. All right, so we have next is the approval of the minutes from the meeting of June 6th. You should have received those in the Dropbox. Uh, is there a motion to approve them as submitted? So moved. So moved. <coughs> that would be Mr. Niles uh, moving and a second by... Sure. Joe Di Natale, we have a we have a race to seconds. Um, do we have Mika yet? <coughs> Mika? Okay. You? Yeah. She says I'm in waiting. God. Make sure that maybe that she's using the same number that Charlie is because he got in. <coughs> huh. So there's nobody there. There's nobody there. Mika, are you there? Charlie, what's the number? 605-472-5353. Right, and the access code? That's right here. So we do have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion on the minutes? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <coughs> minutes pass. And now we go into a grant discussion to turn it over to, uh, oh, oh, sorry, yes, and item 4A. So um, the chairmanship uh, is should be rotating on an annual basis. Uh, last time, uh, Julia Cook and I served as co-chairs, uh, which was uh, a great experience, I think, for me and for Julia. Julia certainly um, got very involved when <coughs> things were going on. And we had also discussed that it probably works better with one chair rather than two. Um, and uh, at different times, and, uh, and a vice chair. So we have discussed that role. Well, actually, uh, technically now, we, as of what two meetings ago, we have one. You were yeah, with us, just chair. Right since that meeting. Uh, Mika, are you with us? Okay. Say just say yes when you're here. We don't know if Julia has delivered. Yeah. She has. She has. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Robinson. I don't know what it tells me. Wow. Hey, Should have been other business. That's what I thought you were getting ready to announce at the beginning of the meeting. Oh, <laughs> man. That's new business. So anyway, so I would uh, propose that we actually uh, nominate uh, John Spector to be chair of the EDC from uh, the rest of this meeting and going forward for the remainder of the year. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Does John Spector want this? Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm happy to do it. So no, yeah. if it rises to the level of want, <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with that. All right. Are there any other nominations? Entertain a nomination that or a motion that nominations be closed. Uh, so moved. <coughs> moved and seconded by Joe and Larry. All those in favor then of casting one nomination, uh, one ballot for John Spector's <coughs> chair, please say aye. Aye. Close nay. Congratulations, Mr. Spector. <laughs> Uh, and now I will turn over the gavel to you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, Charlie, I think we should, I know you've done a lot for the EDC over the years, including <coughs> chairing, and I don't think this is an easy role for any of us to play, but particularly to have to be the one to, you know, 
tell people that they can't speak or that, that we do things a certain way. So I think you deserve a, not a certificate, but a round of applause. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, all right, the next item on the agenda is uh, uh, grant discussions, and we have nine grants. Um, the Economic Resources Subcommittee considered these grants, um, in some cases asked the grantees questions, in other cases relied on the applications, um, and uh, we have made recommendations to uh, approve many of them. We've made some changes to some of them and to not approve a couple, to defer one. And we have different members of the Economic Resource Subcommittee that are going to just briefly give the logic of our recommendations, and I think we should vote one at a time and have discussion. So, so we'll have the ERS member present the rationale briefly, have discussion, and then vote, and then move on to the next one. And um, I'll pull up. So, uh, are we going to we're going to vote to approve or disapprove on every individual? Correct. I think we should just to, to preserve the flexibility in case someone objects to one or not, rather than voting to the whole package or not. Sorry, the, the process remembers the ERS recommends to the EDC, the EDC recommends to the select board, and the select board makes the final decision. So I, I, I would like, if I may, um, <coughs> interject something um, that has been um, chewing at me for a while, and I think I've articulated it more than once. Um, I think one of the failings of the EDC in the past has been that we haven't set up any sort of accountability for the grants being issued. And um, what brings it to light, and I'm not picking on this specifically, this specific grant, but it kind of illustrates what I'm talking about, is the Pentangle Matchy Grant. Now, we granted Pentangle $25,000 some months ago towards a fundraising effort. There was never a report back from any member of Tan Pentangle what happened to that $25,000. Now, there's, I, I think we all know what happened through the rumor mill, but officially, they had been nothing on record that said, well, this is what happened to $25,000. So here we are, we're going to discuss giving them $20,000 more dollars without really knowing officially what happened to the last $25,000. I think that's kind of irresponsible. I really do. I have really serious problems with <coughs> just granting the money with all the best intentions and for all the good reasons. <coughs> But I really feel that there should be some kind of feedback or accountability to what happens with that money. What did it, what, what'd you do with it? If there's any left, how was it spent? What was the result of what you spent it on? And we should know that. And I think that should be part of the process when we grant more money. We can kind of look at this stuff. I doubt very much if 10 years from now, and I could be wrong, Charlie can straighten me out on this. If 10 years from now, somebody were to look back and say, in 2017, you garnered X amount of dollars, you granted X amount of dollars, where did they go, and how, what was the outcome? I don't think anybody could do that 10 years from now. And how could it be used? And was it fruitful? I think that's part of our, our responsibility. And I think to do it any other way is irresponsible. That's the way I feel about it. Well, let me just suggest, let me, let me suggest that we start with the Pentangle discussion <coughs> since you brought it up. And we can continue, consider okay. your point as well as that. Okay. I think I'm the one, am I? I was the one. You would go ahead. Okay. Why don't you present Pentangle? But let's not forget just one. I have a suggestion to make, but go ahead. Okay. Present our recommendation first. Hold on, so I'm not ready here to do this. Oh, all right. right. <laughs> well, so um, I think you all saw the, the notes that John put together from our discussion. So I'm a member of the Economic Resources Subcommittee. Um, and we recommended approval of the, of the Pentangle One, primarily because there was a solid argument that this was a one-time event that would lead to new events, potentially um, on an annual basis, probably with hundreds of new attendees, um, maybe even thousands over the course of each year. And that this was real economic growth because it was a project rather than um, sort of an extension of an existing project that was really allowing them to do new and better things. 
So we actually um, <coughs> suggested approving the entire 20,000. It is a matching grant, so that 20,000 automatically turns into 40,000. Um, and it will allow Pendike to significantly increase what they're currently doing in there. And, and Alita submitted a letter with us that sort of outlined what they are able to do with that money. And they will be able to provide new um, different types of um, programs here in the town hall. That will attract more people. Remind us, the match already there. Yeah. The match is already there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they, uh, they have a 50,000, <coughs> up to 50,000 match. So so the EDC is just providing a portion yep. of, that, of that matching funds required. Other comments about Pentagon or Joe's co comment? I, I want to come back. <laughs> If I may, uh, Jerry, right. I mean, there are many things that we haven't had a full report back on what the impact has been. I, I don't know if it was formal, but I know with Pentangle's application to conduct the uh, study as to whether or not they could actually go out and raise um, the amount of money they had uh, considered for renovating Town Hall. I think it was over a $2 million budget. $2 million, yes. Yeah. Um, and I feel like uh, we did get a, a verbal report back from Alita on that. Um, but I, I don't know if you can point to anything that's in writing. And, and uh, they certainly concluded that they did not have enough confidence in their ability to raise money. Um, and I remember Alita presenting to us, but I don't remember a written report on that. Well, I, I don't want to try. I don't want to, you know, but spe specified yeah. pending. I think it should be part of the grant process. When we get give somebody, whether it be 3000 or $30,000, report back to us, and we should have a process set up within six months, within three months, within five months, give us a progress report of what's going on and, uh, and how is your project going? I like you know? the I idea, Joe. And is that, that land under new business some way, or is, or is that part of I mean, we do that with the grant EDC process. voting yeah, today? I, I, and I think it would also be interesting to talk about <coughs> that under, uh, when you talk about an administrative position. <coughs> right. It's part of one of the reasons why it's not being done. I would love to do it. I, I'm doing 20 hours a week, and there is simply not time to do something like that. So, so that I think that as an EDC, that if you guys want to take it on, you know, with the members of the commission to yeah. start doing that, we could easily. And as a matter of fact, we have outlines of reform. It just takes time. Yeah, and sure. That's a real. That's a real yeah. kind of. Piece I, of I think it. the time, the, the time factor, in, in all due respects, like this, we've been discussing this before you were uh, right. coordinated, right. and the time factor, I think. And I could be wrong. Is involved with setting it up. Yeah. Once it's set up, and you kind of check off the boxes, yeah. it's pretty much it, yeah. it's yeah. it's I not agree. that big a deal after. <laughs> but how to set it up? What's the process it can look like? And do they understand what the process is? And do they accept it when they accept the money? That I think is what we should be talking does, about. Does any of this default to uh, the select board uh, because they're the ones ultimately giving the money at the end of the day? And no. that they, the, the accountability <coughs> has to come back to the town. I think. Well, I think. I think. It should I, I, it's sort of a legalistic one. argument, in right. my opinion. Right. It's I, a question. I won't yeah. put it out there. Can I, <coughs> I suggest that um, it would not be a bad step to take, even though you're not picking on Pentangle? But it, since I'm very confident, I mean. And I'm not. Uh, believe me. No, 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 no. I'm confident that they can make a very comprehensive formal report and would set a very good standard for subsequent follow-up. Since we as the EDC can put conditions on grants, can I propose that we approve the Pentangle grant subject to them before we before they get the funds, <coughs> that they come back and they give us a satisfactory report on how they use the first set of funds? Well, then you get into the discussion of what is the satisfactory report. No, no, no. if we don't... Or the, you know, a time, time. a time frame <coughs> within six months, within no, no, a I think year... They're going to want to do it very quickly because yeah. they want to move ahead. So what do you think, Charlie? Totally reasonable. Yeah. I mean, basically, the report back has to say this is how we use the money. This is the uh, conclusion we came to. And as long as it was used for the purposes intended, um, you may yeah. not like the conclusion, but it was used for the purposes. Intended. Right. Yeah. And fine. That's fine. Yeah. If you know, it doesn't mean that it has to work. It just means that yeah. you know, this is right. what we did with it. Right. And we have we'd like to know about that. I would agree to that condition for this specific grant right. on the condition. That we do set up a formal process for other grants. For other grants, yes. Okay, could we should we have a mo is, any more discussion? Can we consider that suggestion a motion that we approve the Pentangle grant subject to them coming back 
uh, and giving us a formal report on how they use the first grant. And secondly, that we, you know, as quickly as we can, set up a process for a similar process for follow up for other grants. Good. So <coughs> combining two ideas is into one motion. another wait period though for them on that? Wouldn't they, wouldn't they have to come back? They have. Yeah. To, we're not going to give them the money until they give us the report. But I think right. they could. I mean, the lead is not here. The report. But they have the report. They, they, it, it will. Yeah. I think yeah. and, and, and it may be that I, I think think this would be a is to find that report because I got a lot of information from people when I started, so it's possible that we even have a copy of it somewhere. So I, but I have to look for it. Okay, so this is a small town, but obviously, you know, we can accommodate a few comments. So I'm just going to trust the audience to only make a few comments. So you know, Barry, go ahead. Yeah, I maybe suggest that the that middle of the previous report <coughs> has to precede the select board meeting, and then. Oh, fine. Uh, if, if, we, if we can convene, that would be great. You know, yes, obviously. The, or the select board could make a contingent on that, on that either way. I, I, yes, that's a good point. So we'll try to we'll do our best to schedule it so that there's no delay. I, don't, I happen to know a little bit about I, I don't want to speak completely for Alita, but I don't think it's the end of the world if it waited one month to, for them to get it if they got the money on it. I, I believe that's the case. Right, we still have a little season period if you want. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, is it, can we consider yeah, that? Yes. Yeah. Actually, you should comment that uh, Barry is also on this economic okay. research. Research subcommittee, subcommittee so right? So, so sorry, you, that doesn't count as audience comment. Context <laughs> <of my own. laughs> good point. Very well. good point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, <laughs> so that you can do <coughs> suggest that you do it as two different things. I'll second that motion. Okay. The motion. Make sure. Okay, fine. We have two separate motions here. Fine. Let's take the first one, uh, the grant, oh, granting the Pentangle grant subject to the to the to them submitting a satisfactory report. All in. Uh, any further here. discussion? So who made the motion? Joe made the motion, and Mika seconded it. I got your name right, Mika, for the first time in nine months. <coughs> it's Mika, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate that. Thank you. I'll say it again. Then. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. The second motion is that we move expeditiously to set up the follow-up process as we have discussed and try to figure out a way to allocate the time to do that, whether it's administrative time or our time. I move. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any opposed? Aye. Aye. Mika says aye. Yeah, okay. Any opposed? No. Sorry, we're supposed to do a roll call. You're supposed to do a roll call when you have something <coughs> yeah. on the phone. Uh, not if. Um, not if it's, not if it's not unanimous. Not if it's not you. Only if it's not unanimous. That's right. And it was unanimous. Okay. okay. Uh, now let's start then uh, in the order. There's an order in the agenda which is different from the order on the PowerPoint. So if we go in the order of the agenda. Right. I so there's uh, Abigail Azensai. Okay, who is, who is reporting back on this? That's me. So uh, the ERS has recommended to not approve this grant application. Uh, I think our, our uh, primary reasons are, one, that's an existing business, and this, uh, the room she wants for expansion is already, it's already been done, it's already rented. I'm not sure how much of the equipment or the back bar supply she has, but it's really expansion for something that's already already almost done for the most part. Um, going through the rubric, the rubric guidelines that are established, and those are available on the website. <coughs> you know, we, we, we go through and we scored all these. <coughs> this one just happened to come up pretty low in terms of not thinking it was going to attract more residents or necessarily even visitors to Woodstock area. And uh, there was some sentiment that there's also a lot of competing existing companies doing the same thing in the, in the area. <coughs> So that was just, just low scoring on the rubric scale. Did, uh, might I ask, uh, did the committee consider what other sources of funds may be available to the applicant uh, in terms of either private Loans banking or, or yes. other? <coughs> yes, we did talk, yeah, about talk about that. Okay. We also <coughs> considered the storefront <coughs> initiative, but we didn't know so where she was in the building if she qualified for that. We didn't she's think she did. Board. Is that was that, was that the correct? She's second right. board, we weren't windows. certain, but we didn't that's think she right. did. Yeah. Okay. So. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Further discussion? 
No? All right, then uh, I think we can just consider each of these to be a motion. So the recommendation is to <coughs> decline the grant from Abigail's Inside Skin Care. All those in favor of the recommendation to decline? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay. <laughs> so who made the motion and who seconded it? Oh, well, so, uh, yeah. yeah, all right. So, sorry, so, so we, if we need to have a name for each motion, okay, okay. would someone please? Michael made the motion, okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, would someone like to second the motion? Second. Courtney seconded. Mm. All those in favor of not granting the motion, the, the grant? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. It, it is, a, if I may just comment, it is strange when we have a business that's expanding that this, this is a pool of grant funds that's supposed to spur on economic development so we have a successful business expanding that doesn't really need that grant necessarily. So we should express our support, certainly, for any business who's expanding but not necessarily applying for grant funds. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. We, yeah. Just creating jobs. Well said. No, absolutely. I think it was the catalyst role, which was, I think, a very important part of the philosophy of the community grants that we wanted to be a catalyst and there's a number of criteria that indicate that we want to be a catalyst and this doesn't need catalyzing. So. We also recognize there is a <coughs> limited amount of funds and we're unable to grant all good projects. Right. So Joe, I'll make my comment now that sort of limited, if there are limited comments from the audience, we can take those. Joe. Um, so this seems to be a perfect opportunity to give somebody a very low interest loan, which is what she really needed to expand her business. Have you got any further on that? She did not. Two things. One is we are very interested in, in implementing the loan program, which is partly developed or nearly developed, but, but needs a little bit more work. And we're very interested in doing that because we have another applicant to whom we have granted a loan. She didn't request that. We didn't consider it. I, because, you, because you don't offer it. So my question was general. Have you sorted out how you could do loans? We, we, no. We, we're very close to it. And it is on our to-do list because we are about to finalize it for one other applicant. So we could. I think it would anyone object if we reconsidered her application as a loan? Hmm. I don't think we've, it's ever happened before. So. Well, she, she would have to accept the, uh, the concept. <laughs> of the yeah, yeah, of course, but Jill is suggesting. I think there's more things to consider because there's risk. We've got to talk about risk and what, what we're, what the, you know, the variations of risks involved and, and what we have to do to. I'm not, the, I'm not asking yeah. would we approve giving her the loan. I'm saying yeah. would we approve. Re-accepting a, a, a proposal yeah, on right. a loan basis, we've never had that question before. I think we can accept any proposals. Right. Okay. So, Joe. Well, so we, I guess what, we, what we're talking about is we can um, agree to reject this with the condition that uh, if she would like to come back and ask for a loan, we might consider it. Is that what we're talking about, John? Yes, I think yeah. the latter isn't necessary, but it is correct. Okay. Didn't we have a discussion about administering a, a loan too, which was an issue? We, we did, but we believe we can resolve that issue. Okay. We haven't, we don't have the paperwork <coughs> finalized, but Barry's done a lot of work in that area. The bank has agreed. We, Bosar, do you want to comment where we are? Yeah, it was, I, I could do that now. I was going to talk about it in the context of the other one. Shall I? Well, talk? I'm waiting until the yeah. So, Jill, I think the question <laughs> yes, we could consider that. And then we'll talk about the loan in a few minutes. Okay, so, oh, okay. So uh, next on the agenda is the GMHA uh, water fountains. Mm -hmm. Sunday yeah. Sunday Jazz. Jazz. Oh, sorry, Gallery on the Green. I apologize. Sunday Jazz. <coughs> so uh, last year they had come to us with a grant application for a thousand dollars out of a two thousand dollar total budget for four. I believe it was four or five dates, four or five Sundays where they would do jazz. Uh, this year they're ramping it up to every Sunday. Um, up, I think it's through <coughs> September. It's like or 12. Yeah. Yeah. Like and so it's like essentially tripling the amount, and the um, grant request is double of what it was. So they're asking for $2,000 this year. And so we um, recommended to approve this grant uh, because we're supporting something that is actually it's growing. We, we'd like to see, you know, we started as a catalyst, and then now we're seeing it expand threefold. So we feel like that's a great investment in bringing a lot of people into town on Sunday. It's not a lot of money. And it's not a lot of money. And that's a lot of return. I'll just say that the growth was an important part. I feel, I, I, I think 
think we did have different fields. I felt that we were funding the growth as opposed to funding, again, what was the, 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 what, the base. <laughs> and so, you know, if, and, and my view would be if they continued to grow, if they did 24 next year, we might fund the, ex the next 12, you know. We do have precedents for funding growth of events. With, uh, we did that with Bookstock last year, with helping them to reach a broader audience uh, when they applied, even though it was an existing event. Did that happen? We we also talked about uh, stipulation, maybe saying you know that we really encourage this group to search for a sponsor for the event in future years, maybe like a Mescoma Bank, Sunday Jazz Series, something like that, as opposed to keep coming back to EDC. Because I don't, you know. They've grown, but they can't expand any more days, right? So I think there's, there's <coughs> a plateau to this. It's only so many Sundays. It's only so many Sundays. 52. Other <coughs> comments or discussion on this? So um, I think it's fair to say Michael has made a motion that we uh, approve um, the Sunday Jazz grant for 2000. 207, no, sorry. I would second that motion. Seconded by Mika. Any further discussion? So, just to be clear, that the amount is two thousand two hundred and five. Correct. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay. <coughs> and next is GMHA water fountains. <coughs> that was, oh, yeah, water fountains. I guess that's the way to describe it. Yeah, that was me. We, we elected the yeah, uh, Economic Resources Subcommittee elected to deny uh, the grant application for the GMHA water fountain. Uh, the water fountain, what it, it did uh, to, to us, it seemed like it was a, it's a good project. It's a good environmental project. And, um, and that sort of group might be a better funding source for it. But we did, we had trouble seeing it really fitting into economic growth. There are some connections, but um, ultimately, uh, in light of other uh, more economic growth uh, focused applications, um, we, uh, we did not see that it was uh, uh, something that we should be recommending approval for. So, after moving, I ask for further discussion. Is that right? Right. Is there further discussion? Second. Second. Okay. Second. Is there further discussion? Hey guys, this is this is Mika. Sorry, I'm guessing that the microphone is perhaps not at the end of the table that Barry was sitting at, but I couldn't actually hear what you said. Yeah, ba no, Barry is the sorry, it's, it's far away. Ba Barry, maybe. At least when you, if you want to come up here, we will bring a chair and something. And if you see, yeah, that would be great. Sorry, yeah, Barry was uh, was far away. You have to give back the clock. Uh, yeah, we gotta get the serve. <laughs> oh yeah. Thanks, <laughs> Mark. Um, well, I, I it, it could be a slippery slope. I, I don't like to say that no one can say something. So if you have a very brief comment, please go ahead. I just don't understand how a water fountain is a water fountain. This, this proposal is for a. A, a device like I think it's like the one you see at airports where it easily fills up plastic bottles and so the idea is to reduce the number of plastic bottles that get thrown away that was the proposal is to install two of those machines rather than selling plastic bottled water we so I guess I don't understand how that's Con they're not considered economic development but new benches in the park is considered <coughs> economic development what's it you know uh, well, I mean, is that, I think that, that um, I think we, we felt that, uh, well, I'll tell you how I, how I felt, because I didn't think I well, was. Well, hello? Yeah, sir. <coughs> uh, given um, that that comes in the revitalization subcommittee, uh, the benches in the park are a small portion of the whole concept of um, revitalizing the entire community for both visitors and residents to make it more appealing, more attractive for people to come and for people to stay. The benches is just a part of that. I would add that there's a broad concept that I hope over the next 12 months as we start to do our work a little 
bit differently but still pursuing the same objectives that a new concept will become clearer that would help to explain this and that concept i don't know what the words are yet but it's something about the directness of the connection to economic development yeah. right so a very direct connection is you know someone is going to uh, you know build a factory and employ people or build housing and entry level people are going to help solve the housing shortage and we're going to give an incentive to make that happen you know a less direct way of doing of encouraging economic development visitors is to make the green look beautiful or Teagle's Landing look beautiful or to have a trail you know or to, and a smaller version of that is to have the green look partially beautiful with benches and I think that you can kind of keep going getting further and further away and I think two little water fountain machines that will have people drinking water out of replaceable bottles instead of not replaceable bottles is legitimately a level of directness much less than benches, which is much less than building apartments or you know houses or whatever. So I think we're going to need to do a, a we're going to need to describe that concept and do a good job of trying to be as consistent as we can in drawing some arbitrary line that says at some point it's just too indirect. <coughs> And I think that's, at least for me, how, how you know, and that's a judgment. We're going to have to use our judgment. You know, we're doing our best. So. Uh, if anyone disagrees with that on the ERS, is that a, that was at least. Oh, I agree the only other thing that I, I think we talked about is the fact that it's, it's actually working with existing participants, that it's not really going to increase the participant right. level at Green Mountain Horse Association. Right. So, so that was another factor in, in making the decision to, to not fund it. Okay. Oh, sorry. Any further discussion on? Um, Thank you for a brief comment. <laughs> uh, any further discussion on GMHA? All right, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Right. You, have, you have moved <coughs> all, all, Any opposed? No? OK. Uh, that recommendation is approved. Uh, Thompson Senior Center Home Share. Is that That's me. Sarah? So the Home Share program was um, is, is basically a, a system that matches homeowners with potential roommates and um, it's, it's a system that's being, it's a, a, a process that's actually being used in other parts of the state and so um, the Thompson is going to be working with HomeShare Vermont to sort of have a satellite version. Uh, this will help them get the project in place, it will um, fund some of their time. It will also allow them to not charge for some of the administrative fees for the first few um, matches that are made, so that encourage new people to do it. And the, the ERS decided to approve it because one of the goals of the EDC going forward is going to be housing. And this certainly <coughs> takes a little piece of that and gives a different opportunity for housing in this community. <coughs> the, amount of the grant request was $7,689 and the total budget is $15,377. So um, especially because I'm going to read my notes here that this is increasing housing availability for entry level housing or housing for individuals or small families is one of the intentional <coughs> intents, um, intentions of the EDC and so that this fits right into that goal of housing and affordable housing in our community. So, I can't make a motion. As the, oh, <coughs> am I allowed to make a motion? It's, a, it's already a motion, right? Because of no. the ERCs. I, I can second it happily. No, I think somebody, somebody. Okay, I, I move that we approve it and make a prematurely second okay. it. <laughs> I'm not second it. Sorry, I, okay. I, I didn't, okay, thank you. Yeah, Sally's a member of the ERS, but not a member of the EDC. Okay, uh, so any, f any further discussion on this? Well, I, I love this idea and this concept is to increasing the utilization of existing housing stock and making housing more affordable for folks. Um, I think it's a great concept. The Senior Center has taken it on. Um, these expenses are really personnel expenses uh, from the application, so we're helping them staff up ostensibly to actually make this happen. And without it, would it happen? Probably not. Um, so if we can do this and increase utilization, increase the number of affordable housing spots, awesome. Uh, so I, I'm going to vote in favor of this. Other comments? I will say this is an example of one of those <coughs> things in the bullseye in terms of direct versus indirect. I mean, the metric of success for this is a number of housing units created. 
um, it, it's very, very directly related to one of our four priorities. Any other comments? All right, all in favor, it's been moved and seconded, all in favor of approving the home share grant for $7,000 odd dollars. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, yeah. <laughs> Any opposed? <laughs> Okay, that uh, carries. We've approved that. The next is the uh, town of Woodstock fireworks. Okay, so the fireworks. <laughs> May I ask a question? Before, yes, ma'am. Before you could. Go ahead, yeah, Mika. Thank you. Um, so uh, I may have misunderstood, but I thought that the pro just a process question is the ERC recommendation the motion, or you still need a motion? We still need a motion. The ERS, e Economic Resources Subcommittee, okay. we still apparently. Uh, ERS, excuse me. Right, we still need a motion, okay. yes. Sorry, I, I thought that was the motion. Right, I did too. Okay, thank you. All right, Michael, go ahead. Uh, okay, fireworks. Um, the total budget for this year's fireworks, $13,775. And the request is, it is lower, it's 3025 is that? Yeah, it's been lowered. It has been lowered. Be um, <clears throat> so this Do is to amount. cover Fireworks, music, policing, trash, restrooms at Union Arena, uh, and we vote to we recommend to approve this motion. It's a broad-based, supported um, event. It brings a lot of people to town. Um, it's an attraction. It's it's a it's a big deal here. So we we recommend that we approve this. Comments. Is that a motion? Yes, I think there's a motion. Okay. Um, Would someone like to second the motion first? I'll second. Okay, got it, Michael and Larry. All right, discussion? Is this going to come up with you like the flower pots? Yeah. I, 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 we it, it did depends. make some recommendations <laughs> similar to, <coughs> maybe. to the music yeah, that maybe. Um, okay, maybe some bigger maybe players that should go work. after to <laughs> sponsor those in the future. but. I think I think what I hope happens, and this is again, I mean, this is sort of our next discussion tonight, and we've been discussing it for the last two meetings. Is what I hope happens is that by setting priorities and allocating most of our funds towards large grants, we will start to squeeze out things that maybe some people, I'm one of them, feel ought to be funded typically by a town, not by it's yeah. not a you know it's not an amenity, it's a it's a foundational thing. But we decided that we're not quite ready to make those fine distinctions this year, and it's a small amount of money, and it was an unexpected and a last-minute thing. So, you know, we, we so for me at least, I was willing to approve it. I, I might not be willing next year, particularly if we have a lot of money spent. Yeah. We need to be spent on bigger things. It, uh, it's not a lot of money. Right. It really isn't, and the fireworks, but. I think a lot of people can jump on a bed and wake up. And the, the request has gone down from the original request. It was gone, it's gone down about $1,000. That's from fundraising. And, and they are, this is an example where they are looking for actively and continue, I think, to look for actively for, for more funding. So maybe, 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 Mary, maybe you can clarify. If you do raise <coughs> more funds, you'll ask for less from us. Yes, our right. request will be that. And um, I've already I found out that um, the stage is not going to cost what we originally thought. So you might have, there might be three or four hundred dollars different. And um, a tent that. Well, that's okay. I mean, the point is that <coughs> the philosophy is this is a match. If we get more money, <coughs> you take less money. All right. Other comments about this? All right. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Passes the grant to the. Woodstock Fireworks passes. Vermont Kitchens. Vermont Kitchens. Um, so this is this is more money. <laughs> uh, so it's thirty thousand uh, dollar request. We looked at it uh, a lot of ways. We're recommending approval in in uh, in, in a way, uh, but we we saw merit from a, a lot of ways that we looked at it. Um, and our proposal is that we fund a fifteen thousand dollar grant. And a fifteen thousand dollar loan, and uh, I can I can uh, I'll talk in a minute. Let me I'll talk about the project, and then I'll talk about the, the loan. Um, and we saw that it that the in many ways the project fits squarely within uh, our our tactics, our strategy, uh, goals of the EDC. 
Um, it's a new business, um, and it, it enables other businesses to grow. So it's, it's kind of a, um, a, a lot of bang for the buck. Um, it's a known quantity. This is something that she's done in the past successfully. Um, and uh, she's made a large investment. This will amount to about 11, 12 percent uh, grant of the, uh, actually less of the overall, it's less than 10 percent uh, of the overall project and uh, 10 percent, uh, 10 percent loan. Um, any, any other questions about the fundamentals of this, the project? I'll talk about the loan. Uh, no, no questions. I just thought I, I, it's something I can get totally behind. Yeah, it's so it's a it, great idea. Can I just ask Courtney to just make the comment briefly, share the comment with the group that you made about how the inn would feel about having this event in town? I just, yeah, having I, this facility think, in town. I think there's just um, not just the the resort, but the, any lodging property around here would definitely look at it as an attraction for their guests and something that they can promote, um, take advantage of. So it's just another another driver to bring visitors into our town. Yeah, and this is th this concept is something that at least um, informally the, the group has discussed as something that would be nice to would be good to have around. Um, and so so the loans. So we're close. This is actually we've been looking at it for two years now, um, looked at a number of banks, Mascoma has jumped in and it fits in with their uh, commitment to you know, community participation. Um, the way it would work is that the town would open a bank account uh, at the bank. The town, there would be an application, normal loan application, um, they're offering a reduced application fee. It, my re recollection it was something like $250, $300. Um, and perhaps that's something that the app, we haven't discussed this as an ERS. Uh, my commentary is perhaps that becomes uh, obligation of the applicant. Um, and we, the, um, that money would then be provided from the bank, would come out of the account, would go to the applicant. The bank would process the loan um, they're considering right now a loan, typical loan is about 7%. They're considering doing this as a municipal loan for us if they're able to, which is 4, 4.5%. Four um, what we had discussed, it would be a no interest loan. So, um, or that's open to discussion, but low or no interest. Um, and uh, if it's what the bank recommended is if it's no interest, it's a three-year term. That's another, we've got to decide how much interest and in uh, and the term of the loan. Um, they would, the bank would do the collection. Um, the payments would go into the account to refund the account, less, their, less the interest. Um, so effectively, after three years, if it's a no interest loan, it's about another five, six hundred dollar grant. Um, and in this case... But we bear the risk of, uh, of non-payment. And we bear the risk of non-payment. That was my um, question. Well, so if they don't pay, we pay. If they don't pay, we pay. Um, one thing so we're, we're, guaranteeing, we're guaranteeing the loan. We're right. guaranteeing the loan. Yeah. One thing we've discussed in the past is um, if you were to grant that $15,000, you guarantee it won't be paid back. It's that what? That it will be paid that back. That it's not paid back. A right? grant will not be paid back. A grant will not be paid back. Right, that's right. Right, so there is, there is risk, um, and we try to, um, uh, d the first thing, with loans, um, the intent is that the Economic Resources <coughs> Subcommittee or the subcommittee that evaluates the loan will, will first um, determine whether it's an appropriate investment, appropriate risk to take uh, for the town do we does it does it serve uh, economic development um, and then the bank would um, they would do some their their, their basic <coughs> review so we would have to encumber just to be clear so that we, right. we would have to encumber our funds mm -hmm. So we would it would we would account for this as if we're giving away thirty thousand. That's right. And then each month, as it was paid back, we would reduce that amount and yeah. put the money back into funds. So we we would not get caught short. It's just we should be thinking about this as unless they default. 
Well, I mean, no, but even then we won't be caught short in our accounts. That's right. 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 Because we won't find out, oh wait, we don't have the money. That's we, right. we will not have, we will, we will yeah. constrain our other funding yeah. until this gets paid it, back. It, right. it's, so it's essentially, it essentially a 50 grand be put in escrow. Correct, exactly. Is the applicant subject to approval by the bank? Yes. That's a good question. They are, even though we're guaranteed. Well, uh, I'll clarify that. They, they do, they, um, they do want a full application, and um, I'll talk to them soon about what level of risk. Yeah. Um, we should ask them to tell us what they would have decided. Right. Well, so, yeah. so typically an underwriting criteria. I mean, but I mean, if they were, sorry. No, go ahead, Mika, because it's hard to come in on the phone, and then Charlie. <coughs> Is that right? Nope, yep. Mika, go ahead. Oh, well, I was just going to say that I, 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 I could be wrong, and I have even part of the, the conversation and development of the loan, but it, it appears that, you know, part of this is being able to provide financing to people who, you know, might pose potentially a higher risk to a traditional bank, and being able to, to offer a form of lending to somebody who isn't completely risky, but, you know, perhaps maybe a little bit more so than the average, the average mark on the lender, or lending. Um, so perhaps they do pose a higher risk, but I would imagine that that's part of what we're doing. Okay. That's been part of my discussions with the bank. Charlie? So I was just thinking about other revolving loan funds, because that's what we're really talking about setting up, essentially. Um, because then it's up to this group to establish what that criteria might be for borrowers. Right. And for the bank, what the bank's role is in uh, doing some underwriting, whether it's running credit reports, making sure the person hasn't absconded with money before, and doing all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm and setting all that up. And I know you've had discussions with the Green Mountain Economic Development Corporation, <coughs> as well as other community <coughs> lending organizations like Community Capital, in I believe. State, right. Yep, in the state, as to who could provide this type of service. And do we need to have an agreement with the town select board to be able to do this type of lending arrangement? It's, so I, would, I think we would. Well, do the EBC need agreement with the select board? Or I think we need to propose to the yeah, select right. board to get into this agreement because we're right. advisory. Well, so the we, it, to <coughs> some extent, we did. The EDC did, and the select board. We described the concept, and the and the number that we had discussed was up to a hundred thousand dollar commitment, and the select board per loan approved it in concept. No, in, t no, in total, no, total, total, total. We, yeah, we described to them <coughs> probably a maximum of, I think it was 25000 Right, uh, so now we're just in the, in the short the strokes. Details and cash. Right, in terms of, do we need, is there a, an agreement with the bank, between the bank and the town, about how to administer the funds? There would be. Okay. Right. And so they're working uh, that end out. But, but there are questions, there, yeah. there are different motivations to provide a loan. Uh, Mika, one is uh, provide a loan to a uh, uh, allow a loan to someone that may be higher risk than is co comfortable for the bank. Um, it may be uh, to only provide um, loans to someone that um, would meet the bank's criteria but offer low interest. Um, so, you know, there's reducing the interest and providing loans to higher risk applicants. So I think what we, I think the idea here is... Exactly. I think the idea here is that we've liked the loan program. Now we have something that we think really fits it. So let's finalize and complete it, whether we need approval from the select board. We'll get all the approvals that we need. You know, so I think what we would be approving, to the, the motion would be to approve a grant of 15000 and to approve pursuing and completing the structuring of a loan program and assuming we can do that successfully to grant them a loan of 15000 Yeah, because I think that this loan would be probably the template. template. Correct. This is the first one. Yeah. Michael? just want to add that I think this ties in perfectly with what Joe was talking about earlier about accountability right. in terms of loan programs. So if you have someone who's coming back maybe quarterly and giving us a, a report, it's a, a way to kind of keep tabs on them and make sure things are, are progressing and keep them on target so that they're actually working harder and paying off a loan. So I think that, that should be an essential part of any loan that we give. Do we know if they, do we know if they want a loan? We do not. 
uh, cash flow might not be that attractive if you got to pay it back in three years versus if they get a 15 year yeah. loan. Right. That, uh, well, if they don't want a loan, they don't want a loan, and we offer a 15,000 dollar grant. I did, I did ask her yeah. that's, what was, that's why I was thinking about the agreement with the bank, because if they do the underwriting, say, well, they can't pay it back. Obviously, they can't pay it back in three years. Sure. Well, no, I mean, does, does the applicant want that? Right. Yeah. Over their head. <coughs> does the applicant have to reapply for a $15,000 loan? We can do the grant and then come back on the. Well, I, I th th what I would propose we do is approve, uh, uh, approve the motion to give them a loan. Obviously, if they don't want, them, <laughs> we won't. We won't. Right. But we will have approved it. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, if that's okay. Approved, I mean, approved the availability of a loan. Right. Exactly. Part of the reason we thought of loan is that in the application there was some sense of there was some timing issue, right. uh, and there was some there was a cash flow issue. And so if we can solve a cash flow issue uh, that can be repaid, uh, that's, that's great. Uh, uh, granting an additional 15000 Okay, I think many of, some of these details we can work on offline. I, I, I sense that, that there's not any disagreement about the direction. So the motion has been made by, well, no, Barry can't make the motion. Would someone like to move? So move. Okay, second? Second. All right, uh, is there any further discussion? Do it one piece. I uh, sent Caroline. I think that's the name of the applicant. Yep. Yes. Um, some information about the Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund because they actually helped set up the uh, food hub in Hardwick, uh, which really gave birth to a lot of different food organizations, including Caledonia Spirits, the makers of um, Bar Hill Gin, uh, who just opened up a new facility in Montpelier. So I mean, it it does work. Uh, but there are some state resources, so I encourage her to apply and also send that to the person who manages that fund. I don't know if they ever connected. I th I they she, were, she I think she did she say she, she connected did. and that, that, that it was not, she did not fall into what they were funding at the time. So. And there we go. <laughs> and I had, I had also sent her some other opportunities, and um, we're still looking. Okay. All right. All right. So <coughs> she may find another source that yep. is actually more attractive than a loan. That's what I'm just right. thinking, and that might be great. Right. Yeah. And then uh, perhaps offline discussion is, uh, or however you want to do it, uh, what should the term be? And just fundamentally, how long uh, is there interest and um, is uh, who pays for the application? Well, I'm going to suggest this right now as a process point that you, that a couple of other people join you if you would like, and that over the next month, you try to put some effort with that group into finalizing the details. I mean, you're fully up to speed on all this and designed it. So <coughs> let's see if we can try to get it. And, and, and who, are there other people who would like to um, work with Barry on that show? Oh, oh, okay. Uh, As an old banker, I could probably help. Okay, so uh, one of the three of you. I know he's tough to work with, and not too many people who probably would be able to do it. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so the three of you will try to finalize this over the next uh, over the next month. Okay, if the motion, any further discussion? Any other discussion? Okay, we have motion and seconded. All in favor I just of. Have to say, sorry. Go ahead. Yep, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Mika. I, I just wanted to say how exciting. I just wanted to say how exciting yeah. this is on all levels. The, the project itself is, is so wonderful. I've seen projects like this in for-profit worlds, in non-profit worlds. I feel like I've seen uh, this kitchen tech project really benefit so many people in so many ways. It's great to see it. And the loan project is great. And it just is, is very exciting. All of us. Yay. Agree. <laughs> I second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. You have impeccable timing, Mika. You're doing it right, right when I say any opposed. And I'm looking, I'm looking right at you. You can't tell, but I'm looking right at you. So, all right, that is approved. We have I'm two. Sorry. No, 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 no. There might be a funny little delay here too. And it's no, it's good. I mean, you can, can you hear us? By the way, can you hear I us? Can. I okay, can. Okay, good. Over, over my kids, and and I'm on a yes. So four I can. second delay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Woodstock Nursery <laughs> School. I think that's me. Is it, is it anyone else? Okay, that's me. Um, so Woodstock Nursery um, has a proposal to expand staffing and services. Um, we uh, asked for clarification of, uh, you know, how many, how much existing, how much would this grant add to capacity? We, we have in the past funded, as we all know, funded expansion of childcare. 
Um, we did not get an answer to the questions at, at our meeting. Actually, we, we, we didn't get an answer to our questions at the meeting. Since then, I think last night or something, we got an email trying to address some of the questions. I looked at it quickly. Uh, to be honest, we're not in a position, I mean, the ERS hasn't received it, uh, hasn't considered it, and we're not in a position to do it. So we're not, propo we're proposing, we, and we've done this in the past, when there has been a grant that hasn't, well, we don't have the information, we have deferred it rather <coughs> than rejected it or approved it. So we are recommending that we defer this until until we can get until we can consider the new information that's been submitted and ask whatever questions we have. And when would you uh, take it off the table, if and under what conditions? I, um, I, 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 the, the last time, it was a natural erosion of the process until we just stopped working on it and the applicant stopped applying. So it, it, it happened naturally. <laughs> So we, that's the one example. The road, we have. road to a stop. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, this one might explode in flaming, you know, or it might just go to successful completion. I don't know. I would say that let's, uh, if the ERS is willing, let's try to consider it next month, th th during this next month, so that we can come back at the next EDC meeting with a recommendation for approval or not. Is that, uh, yeah. I would say if, if that doesn't happen, then perhaps we should have a discussion about what kind of criteria and how long and so forth. But I would say that let, let's just give it a month and see if we can resolve it. So, uh, is there any? Does anyone disagree with that process or with the, any comments about the recommendation? So I'll move that we defer consideration of the Woodstock Nursery School expansion grant. Is there a second? Joe. Second. Any further discussion on this? Okay. All in favor of deferring? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the ayes have it. Okay, um, the last proposal is Woodstock is the TV commercial uh, marketing Woodstock through TV uh, merchant TV commercials. Um, is this me also? Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Okay. Um, so this was a, um, a, a this started out as a sixty-seven thousand dollar proposal. That was what was presented at the last EDC meeting. Uh, that was for thirty-five businesses, uh, uh, specific businesses. Um, to create two TV commercials, to have those commercials played, I think it was 400 times a month uh, in total for 12 months to attract regional shoppers to Woodstock. Um, through, uh, uh, in the spirit of, sort of being completely transparent, as we had done in the past with some very big grants, we, we followed the similar philosophy and process, but we had much more intensive interaction with the grant applicant in this case. And uh, we did it in combination with the marketing subcommittee and the economic resources subcommittee, marketing subcommittee because this is a marketing proposal. And um, we worked through, we had a long discussions, a representative from Comcast was there, um, and again the marketing rep and the ERS subcommittees were there. And what what came out of that was a recommendation by the ERS to approve a pilot test for $25,000. The total cost of the test will probably be about $30,000. The ERS would fund 25,000 of it, and it would base it would fund one set of commercials, of, of TV commercials, fi the filming, I mean the production of them, for uh, for businesses that apply and all businesses in Woodstock and the town of Woodstock would be given the opportunity or all retail businesses that where there was a chance that you know you would it, it, we don't want to do this for sort of law firms where you're it's not you know you're not attracting shopping so to speak but all businesses that were relevant would have the opportunity to participate uh, and they would be required to pay a small portion of the cost $175 for each commercial and each commercial each, sorry, each, each no, no, each. No, 175 five, all in. In other words, one, one merchant would pay $175, they would get one commercial. They would get one commercial. It would be shown however many times. It's the production cost. It's the production cost. It's okay. part of the production cost. And so for the second commercial, is another cycle? There is, a, there, this is a pilot test. So okay. this is a, th what we did is we said, look, this could be, well, I'll give you my own, well, what we thought, some people thought this could be a really good idea. Some people thought it might not be a good idea. So let's test it, was the idea. And so let's fund it for three months. So what we agreed to fund was 
the production of one commercial, not two, a process of selecting businesses that was completely open. In other words, it wasn't you know, my friends or Courtney's friends or yours. It was any merchant that wanted to pay $175 could be included. And there's an, there would be, and we're counting on the applicant, which is Nick and, and a group of folks, to administer an open and fair process, you know, of, of inviting people. Um, and, it, and then those, that, and they would each pay 175. We would contribute a maximum of $25,000, which would fund some of the production costs and three months of commercials. And, the, and that, and then the, we would, so we we made the grant contingent on. A, that there be an open and equal process for merchants to be able to participate, that it wasn't anything less than that. And secondly, that there were three conditions, basically, or well, four. One is that there would be a maximum of 25,000. Two is that there would be an equal and fair process. Everyone would have access uh, who wanted it. Third is that uh, we would develop as an EDC between now and probably October-ish, because we need to implement it, a way of measuring the marketing effectiveness of both the TV ads and the website well, there's, and there's, social media. There's a series of digital um, it, uh, suite, there's a suite of digital product that goes along right, with I the don't TV mean just commercials. The, yeah. Right. So, yeah. the, so what we will end up with over the fourth quarter is we will have our current digital marketing initiatives, the website, uh, Instagram, social, uh, uh, Facebook, and other uh, blogs. Plus, we will have the TV advertisements and some digital assets that are largely driving people to our digital assets. Right. And we'll have all of that. And the th so the third requirement, condition of the grant, was that the marketing subcommittee, between now and then, develop a set of criteria and, and a way of measuring which of all of that bucket is working so that in late December, early January, we can actually measure it. it uh, maybe it's a survey of, of, of people walking on the street or something of that sort. And based on the results of that survey, we would then act. We might say TV advertising is God's gift to Woodstock. We may say it's a terrible failure, or we may say it's somewhere in between. And we may say the same about the w website yeah, and Instagram yeah. and so forth. Yeah. And, and, and then the fourth requirement, this is maybe getting to your point, Brittany, is, is the fourth requirement is that in, during that time, the marketing subcommittee will develop an integrated marketing plan that would take into account the possibility of TV advertising, all of the digital assets and so forth, so that going forward, we will have a not completely integrated plan for the fourth quarter, but it's a pilot test. Going forward, starting in January or late January, if we take us a month to figure out the results, we would have an integrated plan where the messaging and the images and so forth were well coordinated. And we don't know what that integrated plan is going to be because it depends on the test and it depends on the survey and so forth. So the recommendation is to approve up to twenty-five thousand dollars for a pilot test. Okay. Uh, Questions now? Yeah, yeah, let's have them. So I move that. Well, I, I just yeah, no, I'm going to give you. Okay. Second. Okay. Now it's been moved and seconded. Discussion. I, I just um, one of the things we've we've always talked about is is trying to develop an annual uh, plan within. Uh, the EDC to to have a marketing plan that that um, that is for the town itself and to drive visitors and residents here and more comprehensive. You know, the biggest concern at first was that we, that this grant was asking to put all the eggs in one basket, um, but uh, I think it's a, I believe it's a piece that um, a piece of a larger puzzle puzzle that uh, we do want to see so we get a chance to see. You know how this platform works. I, I personally have looked at uh, the Comcast model, and, and there's some things that uh, for um, a regional pull, which is very affordable, um, uh, that that drives interest for me personally. So um, certainly something um, I like to try out. And I def and, and also I definitely want to applaud uh, the merchants, Nick. Um, for putting this all together um, and putting a huge effort into trying to educate everybody and, and what, what what you're trying to do and trying to drive traffic here to town, so I'm I'm a, I'm a favor of it. I have a few questions. What um, this is just a regional, is that correct? Correct. Like is that just a sixty a mile? Was it sixty mile? Like a 60 radius, miles. ninety yeah. miles? Yeah, sixty miles. Yeah. Includes what? Burlington. 
Yeah, yeah. and yeah. it gets yeah, the upper vote. valley. It's an upper yeah. valley yeah. push for sure. I'm just curious if, if you know a, a regional effort to justify the cost. I, I, you I, know, I think we're all curious. We about don't. That. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why there's a yes. Yeah. That's why. That's why we. We're gonna, it's not. That's why we. I, I think about if it's just regional. Are people going to come <laughs> from 50 miles and spend a night, or are they just going to go home if they're that close? I, I think. We we, I I think, avoided getting too deep into trying to answer that question yeah. because we thought that the test, we thought we couldn't really answer it, and that the test was a big investment. But you know, I mean, Comcast gave some examples of where it works. There were some people on the ERS who were skeptical that it would work. Yeah. But nobody, you know. Well, it should be worth. So I'm just wondering if 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 it's gonna, it would work. I mean. Structurally, it would work. I'm sure. Yeah, it would. No, no, no. I mean, you got enough professionals involved in this thing that, that it'll work. No, but by but working, will it will it justify what we're? That's what I mean by yeah, working. I think what our yeah. task, the marketing committee's task, is to try yeah. to figure out how do we how do we measure that so that exactly. we can make a yeah. decision in January. And I, and I think in the in the long term plan, if we do come up with a marketing plan, that will be more broad scope than that that region, Eventually. but it'll still include that region. So, yeah. I'm, so one commercial, four hundred times. That was going uh, to there's <coughs> two different commercials. There's two different commercials. But so no, you're going to no, start with one. No, no, no. We start with the production of one. Yeah. And, it, and it, depending on how right. many people sign up, if there were, th if Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, if, if there were 35 people that end up paying the 175, then I think it's something like, how, how many, can you remind us it's how many? 10, 10, each one we have 10 per month. 10, it's about 350. In total. <coughs> per if month. Get 35. If they're 35. Per if they're 35. Uh, about uh, six or seven different stations, Comcast stations. Okay. And uh, in the process is going to be conducted by the marketing subcommittee? The, the Getting, garnering well, the applications, collecting the money? No, no, no. No, no, no we, we, we made clear to Nick, the applicant, the yeah. applicant yeah. Nick, that we were counting on him to um, correct me if I'm wrong. We were counting on him to adhere to sort of basic principles. Those principles were, you know, you run the project. It needs okay. to be fair, right? And those people can't come to us and say, "Wait a minute, we didn't know about this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and the and the cost has to be limited to twenty five thousand. Otherwise, Nick and and the group are going to run it. With the, by the way, the chamber is involved. I want to uh, talk about Nick and the group, but the chamber is involved. You've shared, I think, the list of things. The chamber is on the marketing committee, and so we'll be engaged right. in this. And so we'll you guys are going to just plan. collect the money, say who's going to be involved and who isn't. Well, they're not saying who's going to be involved. We said everybody. No, but who who. Who, who, does, who does it apply? Right. You're going to say who they, right. you're going to identify who those people are. Right. Yeah. We're counting on them to administer the program. And I believe the chamber is accepted to be is is bringing the money in, correct? Invoicing? No, no, no. no. no I thought you were talking about. That. There's no exception, right? Okay. No, no, no. The chamber, is, I think, doing that. He's no, no, doing no. that. Okay. Yeah. Now the chamber just agreed to, you know, yeah. part of the marketing subcommittee. <laughs> uh, send uh, out what you know, send, send out information so that their members could participate yeah. if they okay. chose to. And, generally supporting, I guess. Is that a fair way to put it? Yes. Yeah. So the DRS had s the similar concerns about the regionality and yeah. individual businesses, and that's why partly it morphed to $25,000 um, a, a, a trial. And what it's, what to, to me, what it's testing is the medium as something different than what we're doing now. Yeah. And that could morph. If the medium works, yeah. then the marketing subcommittee will probably look at, uh, should this be, maybe it's more Woodstock uh, focused than business focused, or maybe uh, the region expands, uh, but yeah. looking yeah. at the it's an well, medium as a tool. So just come with them. Right. You know, yeah. if you know marketing, it's yeah. about brand message, and, yeah. and it's a brand message that goes with the town and everything that's included. So. And all of the, each individual business ad is packaged with a Woodstock message. A, a consistent common, Woodstock yeah, message. Consistent. A common yeah. Woodstock yeah. message. And this uh, photo, yeah. so ten, there's a 10 second, shows the prominent uh, places in Woodstock on each commercial and invites them to come to Woodstock. Ten seconds of it is generic. So. Okay, this was a big proposal and, and an important one, so I'm going to allow <coughs> just two brief comments. First you and then Lauren. Live and learn is not the way you do a marketing plan. You are talking about spending $25,000 now, potentially more because you're calling this a pilot, based on no data. You don't know if there's a regional market that's underdeveloped. You don't know if TV commercials 
are effective at reaching the audience that we're looking for. You don't know if Comcast demographics are, are, are the demographics we're looking for. You don't know if the reach and frequency of the kind of ads you're talking about are going to work. This is not a marketing plan. If you want to come up with a marketing plan, spend $25,000 and hire a marketing firm to talk about coming up with a coherent, well thought out, data driven marketing plan. Throwing something against the wall and seeing if it sticks is not, is not the way to test marketing. The way you test marketing is you come up with specific goals you come up with a plan around that, just deciding to spend $25,000 on TV commercials as a shot in the dark is not a way to spend seed money. Well, I just want to say that the marketing subcommittee, I think uh, that the subcommittee meetings are going to be, maybe they have been, but they are going to be public meetings. We've just, uh, going forward, to comply with the open meeting law. And the, the marketing subcommittee is very interested in an integrated marketing plan, and I would just encourage you know yep. people to yeah. attend and give the marketing subcommittee that continue to give that ad advice. Lauren, so this is kind of what I do for a living. I work in digital advertising. I work in um, smart television. I work in attribution. Attribution is exactly what we spend most of our time working on. So when you say <coughs> that this um, grant is very dependent on measuring accurately the results, the uplift from the, this expenditure, you're asking for something that's really pretty impossible. Legally, it's impossible because you really can't track people's behavior. You can't see whether or not they've watched an ad and um, whether or not they've actually walked into a store and bought something. <clears throat> um, Freewheel, which is a Comcast company that does that stuff, is one of my clients. So how are you going to actually measure? In January, is it going to be by the seat of your pants? Because you're, you're saying what you're saying is not technically possible or legally possible. Well, no, okay, sorry, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I think what we're going to do between now and January is the best we possibly can. The well, best you possibly can when you're spending the town's money is not good enough, I'm sorry. You need to come up with an integrated, data-driven marketing plan for the town of Woodstock. Decide who your targets are, decide whether this particular media reaches your target or not. Decide what the message is that reaches that market. This is, this is just throwing money at the wall and seeing if it sticks. Pure okay. and simple. Okay. That's not the way you spend $25,000. All right, well, I, I think noted, I, I guess is the best thing that we can do now. Again, the marketing subcommittee, we are going to move towards you know, a more public and, and announceable uh, and regular sequence of meetings to deal with these issues and and I encourage both of you and anyone else who has expertise or interest to work with the marketing subcommittee to you know to make it as effective as it can. Um, all right uh, any other comments about the specific this has been moved has it been moved? I think I moved it. Yes. So it has been moved and seconded. So any fur uh, continuing further discussion, Charlie? I'd only say that the ultimate arbiter in this is looking at the tax data or the uh, reports that are made to the state of Vermont in terms of the overall sales revenue that's generated from the market. Uh, right. And the other things, the intercept interviews or that type of stuff that you're talking about is not necessarily going to uncover whether or not it's successful uh, or trying to get you know, people zip codes when they come <coughs> to the store. Um, but it's really the ultimate arbiter is going to be. Right. And, and we can measure that. We, we know exactly what our growth rate is. Or we know exactly what past quarters are. If we see an uptick in the fourth quarter, um, we might ascribe it to this. Well, uh, uptick compared to the regional uptick. That's right. right. Exactly. It's good and the state. Good and there's going to be right. weather right. events. Right. And yeah. Would it be based on last and, year and also? Right. Could be. Yeah. I mean, this is not, I, I mean, Lauren is right. This is not, this is not going to be, it's going to be much less precise than more precise. So, Any, Joe, many, many, time. many times in the I past. I'm oh, sorry, Miko. Hold on one second. Joe and then me. Many times in the past, we've tried to determine some type of metrics of some ideas people come up with and how to measure whether it's successful or not. And the one that I've always stuck to, and it seems to be the best guide for me in the businesses I've been in, is the cash register. If you're bringing in some money, something must be working. It's, it's 
to me, you know, getting into the dem demographics, it's, it's important, it is. And it's all useful, I'm sure. But follow the money. That's, that's what you see. All right, any, any further comments? Oh, sorry, Mika, I apologize. Go ahead. No, that's okay, thank you. Um, I really struggle with this one. I respect Nick very much, and I understand the concept of it for sure, and I recognize there are a lot of people that are behind it. And, you know, the fact that there are so many people in the EDC itself that are willing to put their name behind it really holds a lot of weight for me. But I struggle with this. TV is a, it's a dying art, sadly it is. And, and who are we trying to... <coughs> Who is the town trying to recruit, right? Is the town trying to recruit people that watch TV? Because if that's the case, those are people that are generally over the age of, say, 45, 40, 45, you know? I mean, are we trying to recruit young families? Those people don't watch TV. And so I, I struggle with whether or not this is a good use of our time. Um, I I just I don't know that I can get on board with TV advertising. Kind of like, yeah, that's it's like advertising on the radio. I mean, if we were going to advertise on Spotify or Netflix yeah. or Amazon Prime or HBO or anywhere else, then sure. But you know, just regular primetime TV, I, I have a hard time seeing how that is sending the message about our town to people that we are trying to recruit. I feel like that's just messaging to the people who are already inclined to move to our town. And, right. and so I'm not sure really what the, what the ROI is on that. Right. Lauren, I apologize. I'm going to I'm going to keep this I, I I'm going to keep the discussion. I'm going to not recognize you right now because I think we're at a critical point of, of sort of the EDC trying to make up its decision. I, I, the the process of of not allowing comments at a time like this is something that we're going to examine and and you know but but for right now that's our process and so I don't want to create too much of a slippery slope. I'm just going to suggest perhaps that we that we just you know rather than you know, all in favor, any opposed, that we simply actually just go around and vote on this. Uh, is anyone, is everyone okay with that? I, um, just because it, I, I don't know that, you know, I'm, I'm, make, I'm sort of trying to create space for you or anyone else who really has some doubts about this to, uh, to just express those in the vote. But I think we should, and, unless there are other arguments and discussions, I think we should take a vote. Is there any? I, I just think one Good. more comment. I uh, totally okay. agree with everything they say because I've been a proponent of that all, all along. Absolutely. However, I mean, part of my support is, that, is there is some interest there and in, in how that could work um, and understand the difficulty of measuring it. Um, also, there are 35 merchants that really want us to support them. Um, so I have to take that in consideration too. I think we have to take that in consideration. Uh, I think there is a bigger plan that's going to happen right after. It's going to be being worked on now, so it's going to be start really looking at it. I mean, we don't have any, um, any digital drivers uh, to our website that we spent a lot of money on. We've got to consider that. We haven't, we, we haven't gotten there yet, um, and, and that would have been my first choice to go that, that route. But, um, you know, Talking about paid I, search. Yes. Yeah, or of it. Yeah. A month. Yeah. All right, so um, let, let's just let's just go. Sorry, any other comments? I uh, just want to know: Can we are we allowed to make a, sh a short rationale why we're voting the way we are? Sure, okay. absolutely. Okay. So let's just start very briefly. You optional. I do have one other question though. Yeah. When when the marketing committee discussed it, I uh, imagine it's all the six or eight members uh, together. Not not all of them were there, but some no. of them were there. And four of them were at least four, four were there. Okay, so realizing that. There are other things you could spend money on. Right. Uh, so how did this flow to the top in the discussion? Good question. I think the impetus of the, if I can speak, it's the market. Answer the question, sorry. You remember of the market. the 35 remember. people who signed on to this. And there are more who haven't that are obviously lacking so I think that that's where it came from. No. It rose to the... Right. Well, I think another way to answer your question, Charlie, is that we don't yet have a place or a process for 
asking for answering that question. And I think our new approach, if we decide to proceed with it, I hope we, I think we will, will give us exactly that. And so we, we don't, you know, we don't have a way to look holistically at AdWords spending versus TV spending, regional people versus segment A, you know, tracking segment A versus tracking segment B. And so the, I don't think the group considered that. They considered from a timing point of view, the fourth quarter is, you know, the time when merchants make or, you know, it's a make or break for the full year. And so we either do this now or we, or we you know, whatever we do is going to have presumably less impact for, for at least for another year. Um, and so I think it, it was more, is it worth spending, is it worth spending this money to learn something um, or not? Um, <coughs> so I don't think there was an answer to, I don't think the group answered your, no, I, answered I your question. No, I from so. personal contact and yeah. So. Sorry. If you don't know, then don't spend the money. No, we understand. It's not a hard or concept. We understand. It didn't okay. come out with supply data on, on commercials yeah. and, and everything else. So he did. Nick did do the homework and supply that data. Yeah, in terms of the number of, of right. number of people, right. the number of yeah. the number of people that would view yep. the ads, that rel rel relative to very similar programs that took place in other cities in Vermont, right. what the results of those were, and so forth. No, I mean there was a f there was that information that was quite available from Comcast. All right, I think it's time for us to just vote, and I'm just going to ask go around and please just say the rationale. Courtney, do you say aye? In favor? Any rationale? Or you don't need to. Larry? No, I, I'm I, I I think. Um, my experience is that you can have as many um, studies as this gentleman is suggesting, is, and you're going to come up with maybe uh, someone with an MBA who's going to tell you this and that and the other thing, and they may be right, but I think it's like a billboard. You know, you, you, how do you measure the effect of a billboard? And, um, you, you know, I look at it as if this was my business, would I spend that money? I wouldn't have spent the money as originally proposed by Nick, but I think I would try it. And, and there's enough information out there that suggests that it m maybe it will work. There's no guarantee. I understand that, you know, if there's no guarantee, you don't spend the money. But, um, you know, I would if, it were, if, if this were my business. And I like to. I like the idea that we're supporting 35 or so eager retailers in the town to see if we can't help out with their with their efforts. So I'm in okay. favor. All right, I'm in favor. I, I think we will learn something. Whether we will learn as much or the same things as we would if we conducted a study, um, I don't know. But I think we will learn something. I think it will be valuable in that way. I am going to just echo Larry. Yes. Okay. Joe? Um, well, um, it, it, there's, there's a little tug of war going on in, inside of the small brain of mine that, uh, you know, we had a $70,000 uh, PR firm that didn't work out very well. I think about that. And I think about. Um, I can agree with some of the comments about TV, and it's, I, I think the population is starting to dwindle who watches you know, TV a lot. But then again, I measure that against there are 35, at least, probably more businesses that we haven't, I don't believe, shown a lot of really concrete support of as an economic development commission. And I think. I think we should do that because of, we should show some support to these local ventures, and it's a lot. It's a lot less than seventy thousand dollars. So I'm going to vote for it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So I don't watch TV. I haven't watched TV in like ten years. So when this first came up, I was like, I don't get it. Who watches TV? That was one of my comments. But I, I do understand supporting the merchants and, and doing something direct for them. At the same time, what I like about this is that they own the commercial whether that's used for content on a website or they're using it for their own marketing purposes. I like that. And there's skin in the game. They're buying, they're paying 175 to get in on this. So I support this. Okay, Mika? I did not mean to back you into a corner now. <laughs> if you object uh, to this, you can, no, no, no. You can vote that's however, you vote your conscience. <laughs> um, I am really struggling 
Um, I think I would like to go on the record and say that I never <laughs> I never vote now. Um, I would like to go on the record and say that I very much want to support those 35 businesses. And again, I really respect Nick. And I love the idea and the concept, and I know what people are trying to do. But I feel like there is money that could be spent. I, I feel like it. There are other ways. There are other tools out there. I feel like people are kind of grasping at straws here. Um, how do we get people to see us? And TV just isn't the answer. Um, I don't. I don't truly believe that it's going to move the needle. And although I recognize the need for tests. I I don't see this as a valuable task. Okay. Um, so, so, so I think you're voting now. I have to vote now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, sorry, I had to kind of talk myself through that for a minute. No, no, no. That's fine. That's that's no problem. That's why we're. That's why I wanted to give everyone a chance to do that. So, okay. I appreciate the comments. I'm sorry that we again have a process where we, you know, where there's not more back and forth. We are going to consider a process going forward where there is more back and forth, and maybe that will result in different kinds of solutions in the future. Okay, um, we've taken an hour and a half. We have 30, I mean, we sort of always end, try to end by nine. We, we have um, a number of things to discuss. Uh, you want to say that it's passed? I'm sorry? Do you want to say that that passed? Oh, yeah, sorry, it, I, I apologize. Yeah, sorry, it passes by about one, two, three, four, five, six to one. Seven, yeah. So it passes by six to one. Yeah, I th sorry, I think that, I hope Sally re recorded that. Okay, so now, that, by the way, I think it's great that we've had nine um, applications. Um, I think some of these applications are bigger and can move the needle. Are they're of, a, they're of a different nature. I think if we, at least since I've been on the commission for the last nine months, I think there's a trend towards more and maybe and a few better in terms of more robust things that will really lead, lead to some economic growth. Um, I think we have a ways to go, but I think it's great that we have nine, and um, and I think the ones that we invested in will really help the town. So. Okay, the next item on the agenda is uh, a discussion of our processes and budget. We've allocated 45 minutes. I don't know that we need to finish this discussion tonight for sure, but what I'd like to do is just to recap where we've been and to uh, summarize uh, some ideas for how we move forward in our sort of basic strategy. We do need to get to the select board soon, and um, if, we, uh, if we don't do that, you know, we have to be ready to go to them. So let's see how far we can get. Um, and I'm just going to share this with all of you. Okay. So, um, you know, and Macy, is it possible if we turn, can we, can you get a decent picture if we turn off? Nick, could you turn off that first light switch, the one closest to you? Is that possible? Is, 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 but Macy, can you see, is it terrible for you or? It'll work. All right. <coughs> I think for now it's probably more important that people can read this. Prior to tonight, I, I believe we have agreed on four things. We agreed on four broad priorities, which are the same ones we and the select board agreed to in 2016. I'll share with those so we can remind you those in a minute. We agreed on organizing in subcommittees around those four, four priorities as we do partially today. We agree that we're going to continue to award community grants, even if they don't fit precisely into those <coughs> areas, but we'll set some sort of annual limit on funding. And we agree that we want to vote, devote more of our time and financial resources to larger programs, and then or by definition, fewer programs um, in those priority areas so we can really have an impact. Does anyone disagree that we agreed on those things? <laughs> that, okay. All right. Uh, Mika, we're in the, in the PowerPoint document called Strategy Update, I think. And I'm on page one. Tonight, I think we Thank should. You, John. Okay. So tonight, we'd like to push. I'd like us to push forward. What should be the mandate for each of those priority subcommittees? Now, I'm going to propose. I've just been bold. I'm going to say what the mandate might be. It's not a recommendation. It's not a decision. It's just to give you a sense of what it might be. And what I'm going to suggest is that we we solicit and we try to figure out who's on which subcommittee and that those subcommittees go off and actually answer these questions. But I just wanted to try to start the ball rolling tonight. So what should the mandate be for each priority subcommittee? I'll lay out a straw man proposal. How do the resources that, that, that those subcommittees might need compare to the resources we have 
And what I'm going to show you is that there's no scenario in which we have enough money. No plausible scenario do we have enough money. And so this is a really important transition for the EDC. We are going to move from a group that previously had more money and fewer projects, more money than projects, and we're now going to become a group that has more projects than money. And that's going to completely change the way we do business because it means that we're going to need to prioritize. And I think it's going to be for the better. And I think the town is actually asking us. Absolutely. I think we all agree on this. Absolutely. How, and then we are going to have a question about how we should award community grants and how much resources we should devote to them. And I'm going to propose that we answer the second portion tonight. How much should we carve out? And that we defer, we let the community grant subcommittee recommend how they want to handle things going forward. I think that there's, we can improve how we do things particularly giving people a chance to talk and so forth, but it's, we don't have to decide that tonight and maybe not everyone agrees with that. Um, and, and so then if, if we're okay with this, we should go and present our plan to the select board. We did give the select board an update. It was consistent with this direction. It was a written update. Sally represented us at the meeting. It came after, as I understand it, a very contentious other yeah, discussion, there was, and so there was almost no discussion. No discussion. So, so I think we should go to them soon, maybe after tonight if we're comfortable. So in the last five minutes, I'll come back and say, are we comfortable going to the select board with whatever we've talked about tonight? If we are, we'll go. If not, we'll wait. Okay. So these were the broad priorities. It's pretty hard to see. I'm sorry. We need to repaint the wall and change the lighting. But basically, <coughs> marketing would stop. Expanding housing, and I said related services, things like child care. Improving physical amenities and I picked the word amenities rather than infrastructure to try to su suggest, not so subtly, that you know, we shouldn't be about paving roads and building water mains. We should be about things that are more optional than that, like maybe the green or maybe Teagle's Landing. We can decide where the line is. Improving physical amenities. In the example so far might be the River Trail, Teagle's Landing, the revitalization work. Supporting businesses and the business environment to date the storefront incentives, and then supporting community initiatives. And a clear desire to focus on bigger things in those four priority areas. And I just, I, I don't mean to put too fine a point on it, but the community initiatives really are not in the priority areas necessarily. And so we're, I think this is gonna force us to come to grips with the fact that some of the proposals that we're getting aren't about marketing Woodstock or expanding housing or improving the amenities or supporting business. There are other things. And like fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to name yeah. But but to well, be clear, it could be well, sorry, go back to the go, first page. Um, pizza. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. Go back pizza? to pizza. There you go. Um Mary and I had just run a gun bell going about pizza. Um I mean, we never use the word tourism at all. Never use what? Court. Right. So, yeah. so this, sorry, this is a subset of the picture. The whole yeah. picture hasn't changed. So the two objectives of attracting people and visit and market, you know, and so forth, sit above this. That's why we're doing these things. And then yeah, these, that's right. these are the ways yeah. we're going to achieve that. The mission. The mission is above it, and the, and the metrics are above it. And, and they're the same as what we said in 2016. And actually, although this is slightly reworded and maybe recombined, this is essentially what we said in 2016, right. those four things on the left. So yeah, so a, a full picture, if you were saying, if someone came to town and said, what's the EDC? You'd start with, we have a mission to attract people and to create a diverse community and have more people move here. The metrics are to have more people in the school system and to have more full-time residents. Yep. We want to attract visitors and all that stuff. I see and then this is just now, yep. uh, is that okay? Yep, got it. That works. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to go through each of these four and I want you to begin to imagine being on one of these four or being on one of these five. I want it to be on the, on the fifth one, the community grants. I want you to imagine which one or ones you might be on. And by the way, I want to extend that also to people in the audience because I think we already have examples in both the marketing subcommittee and the revitalization <laughs> subcommittee uh, that it's not just EDC members. And I think that we need, you know, members. So you want us to pick two things we one, would pry out. I'm one. about to, in a few minutes, I'm going to ask you one or two. But okay. just the way we did on May 13th, and you all yeah, yeah. But I'm about to ask you for either one or two. Okay. Cool. Okay. So here's what 
when the marketing committee meets, they, I'd like, I think that they should establish a couple of bullet points and say, over the next five years, this is what we're trying to do. I just made this up, let's not debate it. And I'm not a marketing person, as, as the audience members made clear. Develop and implement an integrated marketing program that attracts visitors and residents to Woodstock to achieve our stated objectives. Continuously monitor that, test new ideas, engage with interest, and, and by the way, engage with interested prospective residents and business owners. That might fit in another committee too. I, I, it doesn't matter whether it's. Yeah. Whether I'm, I'm taking, I, I've mentioned this to John, but yeah. I'm going to mention it again is that we have a committee that is the website management committee. It's not a marketing committee. Correct. Well, it's a so, digital media marketing program or editorial board. It's an editorial board right. and that is what it is. So I think you have to be very careful on calling them a marketing I, I'm committee. not trying, I, I, what I'm suggesting going forward is that we form a marketing right. committee. Now so that might be the editorial yeah, board. I just think it's the same thing, different name. But I'm not so sure that all the people that are currently on the editorial board are interested in the overall marketing of the community. Are interested in it? Well, let's let's agree. Now, I think Sally's making a good point. Let's agree yeah. so that I'm just saying that you can't you yeah. can't necessarily assume that it's going to agreed. Neatly. We won't assume anything. Just throw a little bit, a little bit of a square peg in a round hole. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, we won't assume anything. We'll let yeah. we'll we'll sort we'll I'm sort it out. Right. What and here's the here's I think a critical element of what I hope over the next month these four slides, this one and the three others, could be updated to reflect what you all think. So these are maybe two or three objectives over the next five years, and here's what we can imagine potential projects being. And, and by the way, this number I added it up wrong, there's a math error here. Yeah. Digital marketing, 50K a year, digital advertising, 50K a year, TV advertising, 50K a year, that's 750,000. So a month from now, maybe, if we're lucky, some group of you and some group, of, some group will come back and say, okay, Marketing Woodstock is one of the priorities. We've got two or three objectives over the next five years. We can envision $750,000 worth of programs that we think could really achieve the EDC's objectives. John, I have a question. Yeah. So, and if, what, and what do you suggest? I want, I'm just trying to get this clear in my mind. Are you suggesting that in the future, the grant request will, be, will fall into one of these four categories, or five, right? right? And then that, that, um, committee will make the presentation to the rest of the EDC yes. whether or not they approve or not. Correct. Approve. Exactly. It won't go to the, the committee that you have. It will first come to the EDC, just like we did with yeah, the TV yeah, yeah. commercial. The right. people who are doing marketing yeah. will, will evaluate a TV commercial. Yeah. The housing the committee will be in their, in their court. Initially, right. Right. The, and, it's, and the housing, the home share program would, would have gone to the housing subcommittee. Yeah who will basically then, that's how we will answer your question. Is I'm home share a better that. thing than doing, than renovating five Central Street empty offices into apartments? Yeah. Is TV advertising a better thing than doing paid AdWords sir? Yeah. And so hopefully that will force more proposals in our four priority areas which can move the needle and it will allow for people who are focused on that to make trade-offs between them. Good. So that's the first one, that's the marketing. So the other committee that, that you folks are on that, made, that looked into these past grants will probably just go away. Right? Well, well, no, I think that really? might be the fifth. Well, we're right. going to discuss that. Yeah. That's, that's a question. Oh. I think because I think there will be some grants that come, that come in that aren't any of the four. And I think some of us feel, I mean, I, we, we, some, I know some people feel we should continue to think about those, but the question so is it, so, so what do you say, that it is conceivable that a grant will have to filter through two committees before no, 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 it comes no, no, no. to the EDC? No, 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 no. Possibly? No, 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 no. no. It would just go to, it would just be, if it's, in a, if it's housing, it'll go to housing. If it's not housing or marketing or amenities or business support, it will go to the fifth committee. And I, you know, and we're gonna have to limit how much money we put in the fifth committee because every dollar, because once we become a committee that has more projects than money, every dollar we spend on projects that aren't in our four priority areas by definition, reduces the amount we can yeah. spend on the priorities. Yes. We're going to come to that. I'm going to show you what the budget gets is. cut up. Okay. What should be the mandate for the housing and related services? Well, maybe they set as their objectives, work with the real estate industry to proactively identify opportunities for expansion of entry-level housing 
and provide the financial incentives needed to add, and here I'm putting a stake in the ground, making it up, to add 40 units of housing over the next five years. The committee can decide on their number. I don't think it should be four. I don't think it should be 400. So I picked 40. And there's a reason for that, but I picked 40. What are the five-year potential projects? Well, maybe buying the garish property, maybe buying and, and, or giving an incentive to a developer to develop it, buying the Alsop, et cetera, property, renovating empty offices on Central Street. 40 units, we have some metrics that suggest that, that we need about a $40,000 per unit incentive. The reason why units aren't being built is because it's uneconomic to build them. And we've done some analysis, some group of us have done an analysis that suggests that if you had $40,000, you'd build it. So that's a million six, order of magnitude. Just again, and we'll let Easily. the, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be, could be more than that. Just, uh, just a note, you're, you're borrowing uh, some other spelling techniques that have been yeah. used before, so it's uh, like a bump out versus a bump out. It's yeah. all sup, not all soft. Just, <laughs> just, right. just to point it out. Yeah, point I was just trying to make Joe feel good about you know, it. Okay. I feel so much better. Don't you? <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm a newcomer. Okay, improving physical amenities. Maybe the objectives are identify the major amenities that would materially improve the enjoyment of Woodstock by residents and visitors alike, fund, seek funding for, and if necessary, program manage these projects to completion. What might it be? Well, redoing the town green, there's a plan to do that. It's about 750,000. Teagle's Landing is about 50. Uh, the River Trail is, we don't, we're not sure, order magnitude 350. Downtown revitalization, I made it up. 250? Yeah, I'll take that. Uh, <laughs> when do I get it? <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on. Well, I'm River Trail number? No, you made it up. No, no, no. no. Well, hold on. I was told by the people, the knowledgeable people, that it was. we thought it was between it 300 and 500. It, it could be anything. We'll take what we can get. Well, but it's not 12. So no, it's not 12. <laughs> it's not 12. I mean, it's, uh, it could Just be. A bit, I mean, there's, there's, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a range of what? Range. 250 to 500. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll take it. Yeah, if you were building a paved bike path, that would be way too low. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Right, right. so somewhere there, between just yeah. a couple of stakes and you have to follow an unmowed path right. to a full-on bike path. Right. Like the 350? Yeah, somewhere in there. Really? But what's about to happen in the next few months is we're going to start to have those trade-off discussions. Yep, gotcha. <laughs> because we can't do it all that. this. But I like the word enjoyment. That's yeah. a great word to put in there. All right, good. Yep. So that so committee can keep that yeah, word. So I don't want to take up too much time. But I'm thinking, the river trail, are you, are you talking about easements and all that sort of stuff that you're going to buy? Uh, uh, that's that committee's problem. I'm just, I'm yeah, just yeah. All, I'm doing is adding, all I'm doing is making yeah, a simple yeah, yeah. point. We don't yeah, have yeah, enough yeah, money. Yeah, right. I, I reject the question. I would draw the question. Okay, fine. Uh, support businesses in the business environment. That's what it says there. Um, identif this is sort of where we might identify policy issues, non-physical barriers to growth, proposed changes to town policy, and then work, and possibly this committee would be the one to meet with prospective business owners and establish a new business. I don't know, we talked about whether that's the marketing committee. I see what Mickey said. Oh, what is she saying? She said that my uh, earphones are up. She can't listen. She can't hear. Apparently. Well, I'll be good. All right, well, I Okay, there's nothing, tell her there's nothing we can do. We're, we're on, we're online. Yeah. Thank you for coming. The, you know, what, it, what, now here, it's not clear that this, that this bucket is capital intensive. The storefront incentive program fits in. It's very small, 25,000. My phone's out of battery. My phone is okay. out of percent. She's out. Okay, she's out. So that could also be where we have a loan fund, a revolving loan fund. Could be that. That's, you know, yeah, exactly, for businesses, right. So, so but I think this, this is probably going to be the smallest of the four. We shouldn't assume, you know, decide that, but we'll see. But here's the basic point. So, oh, you can't see the chart. Oh, look at that, it disappeared. That's interesting. Okay, so on the left, on the left is a chart that's missing that shows what our revenue is. So here's some good news. This year we forecast 288,000 in revenue, which we were going to be up uh, 9, 8.9 or 9 percent. We've got now new numbers in for the for essentially almost all the year except for June, and we're up a little bit more than that. So we're going to be up about 9 percent this year. So we were up 9 percent two years ago, 6 percent last year, 9 percent this year. It's really good. It's awesome. 
If we're up 6% next year, so the lowest we've been in the last three years, we get to 310,000 next year. And if we keep growing at 6%, which is the lowest, maybe that's optimistic, I don't know, we get to about 1.75 million. That's, that's awesome. Over five years. And that's a percent of an ever-increasing number. No, no, 1.75 million is the total ever-increasing number. No, I know, but you're talking 6%, one year, 9%, 6%, so that's, the base is always higher. Than Correct, yeah. so the absolute growth is growing. Sure. We grew more of the, this year is 9% than we did in last year's 9%. Yeah, the compounded <laughs> annual growth rate is probably 15? No, 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 no. The annual growth rate would be yeah, between 6 and 9. Yeah, no, but annual growth rate. Okay, good. Right. So we've got, so a reasonable estimate of, of how much we'll take in over the next five years is about 1.75 million. From five years from today? From starting July 1. Okay. Yeah, or starting January 1, if you want to do Okay, that. okay. 1.75 million. If you add up all those things, and you take out my math error, which was a half a million dollar <coughs> error, and you add in $250,000 for staff support, administrative and program management five years. for five years, you can end up with four million. This is half a million dollars on. There's no scenario in which you can describe the projects that we want to do that come out with 1.75 million currently. Right? In other words, we don't have to debate whether we have enough money. We don't have enough money. We may be two and a half million dollars short, we may be one and a half million dollars short, we may be three and a half million dollars short, but we're short. <laughs> and so therefore, we need to prioritize and sort of change the way we operate and really focus on these priorities because we're millions of dollars short from what we want to do in these priority areas. This assumes no community grants, none. <laughs> now, I'm not suggesting we not have community grants. I'm just pointing out the fact that now, that we operate this way, there's a real cost to doing things that aren't our priorities. It's going to make our job tougher a bit. Well, you know what? This is such valuable information. I think it's great. And you know, yeah. I mean, why, waking up some morning and say, you know what? I don't have as much money as I thought I did. That's not so great. But it's a lot better than thinking you have money that you right. don't have. But it really this, is. This is really about us kind of changing the way we think. Yes. And, and if you remember one of our meetings with. Um, uh, several weeks ago, I brought up about how we need to drive more revenue. And I got pushed back that, no, we have to make a better community. That was that the comment. I said, well, wait a minute. We need, we're the Economic Development Commission. And to get that number, to get things to do, it's, it's about, it's just running any company. You know, we, you need cash. And cash has got to sit there and then make decisions with that cash. We can go out and borrow all the money we, we want to try to borrow, borrow it, but you know, we, can, we can dig ourselves in a bigger hole too. So we have to be very responsible. But at the same time, we got to pick things that we know can drive this number. So why can't we get $400,000 a year? If we can get to a point, a goal like that, and say, what do we need to do? Each time we give a grant, are we really doing that? Are we getting that money so we're able to do more? Those numbers get big. We keep building on top of that, and we do so much more. So. so to fit, so just to finish up, then I agree with everything you've said. Here, given given this situation we're in, why isn't it doing? No. Oh. So I think we we need to be serious about prioritization and how we manage our processes to ensure we stay focused, because now we're going to have real shortfalls. So I think we need to answer some questions about our process. How should we compose the subcommittees? Here's one idea. My idea. Or I don't know if it's mine, actually. I've lost track of who's, because I've talked to lots of people about this. See, see tonight which subcommittees you all would like to be on. Discuss where we need to add more community members, or at least have each of those groups discuss it. How should we allocate resources? Ask each of the subcommittees to come up with a five-year plan, just like I did with the numbers, but for real. And then we come back next month, hopefully, if we can, and we see what it adds up to. And we kind of lay out what I'm going to call targets, not a budget. Because from a business point of view, a budget is something you're committing to and to achieve. I don't think we know. I mean, it, we might say we want to spend 25% on housing, but we may find that we really need to spend, you know, the money on marketing, and we may change. But I think we should set. And Courtney, this was first came from you about marketing, but I think it applies to all four areas. Right, right. So let's develop a five-year plan and some targets that sort of say roughly, here's what we think based on the projects that these groups, that these committees are saying. Let's allocate roughly this amount, and then we may change the allocation. 
How much should we allocate to community grant projects that don't fall into any of the priority areas? Mm. I think the number is going to need to be pretty small. Yes. Um, smaller than what the community is used to and smaller than what we've been doing. How should we manage projects that, that fit into the priority areas? So this gets to your question, Joe. All proposals come before the fully EDC and they can come at any time. They can come from inside the EDC, they can come from the community, and they come, it's not a, it's not a cycle, they come any month, they, someone has an idea or a proposal. We as a full EDC decide which subcommittee it goes into at an EDC meeting, you know? And, and if it fits, or if it, if it doesn't fit, then it goes into the Community Grants Committee. And the Community Grants Committee might do things on cycles, where they might do things <coughs> differently. They have to just, we'll decide. May I make a comment? Sure. It, um, I think what this does also, too, I, I, I don't know, I think, I'm not the only one to have experienced this, but I've, over a year or two, um, I've been getting the, posed the question, you guys aren't spending enough money. Right? You got you're sitting on all this money right. and you're not spending Wait, more money what do you, the projects. What do you, and then you get into this garbage about well you're spending on people right. you like and you don't like it right. that. This the, I think this is that wipes that off the board. Exactly. Yeah, completely. Exactly. I think it's great. Yeah, yeah. Right. Can I say right. Other comments, yeah. Can I say uh, the, the one concern I have is is what Joe says, yes, it does wipe it off the board, but if you're talking larger projects, you're talking time frames that are longer as well. I mean, to even get a housing project going will take, take two years, years. Yes. Yeah. several years. Yeah. So I think that in terms of, yes, we're spending, you're going to be spending money, but you need to, you really need to, in addition to identifying the projects, you have to have, it has to be real in the sense of who's, who's actually going to do the work, how long is it going to take? I mean, these are, these are big projects that are important to the community, but they have to be they can't be just up here. They have to start having some detail to them to make them real so that people can get behind them and support yeah. them. Yeah, well that's why some of them, I mean, they're gonna be long term and you're gonna end up with right. a lot less projects. Right. Or parts of projects or phases of projects that, you know, people have to be patient with us to get, get through them. And we're gonna have to explain yeah. this to the community. Yeah. It's gonna yeah. feel different, yeah. it's gonna be slower, yeah. it's gonna be bigger. Yeah. I think the community is asking us to do this, yeah. so I don't I think they'll accept it, but we have to explain it to them. We can't just so Okay, so that's sort of, this is sort of the, this takes the basic ideas we've been talking about, just pushes it a little bit further. I, generally, I mean, I don't see body language. I don't see any discomfort from this. I see some people in the room nodding. I would love to step away and look at this again for, you know, make any of that. I think it's fantastic. I think, uh, I think you did a great job here, and, and there may be some general changes here, but... Um, my brain's not going to get there okay. tonight. So maybe what, maybe yeah. what we do is, is the following. Is I, I think the only time-sensitive issue is when we, when we uh, decide to brief the select board. Okay, right. So one approach we could do, since it is late, um, rather than requiring everyone to say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine, is let's basically say we're not deciding this tonight. I would <coughs> like to solicit interest from all of you tonight. Interest and in, which, in, in which? In which subcommittees? Committee or committees. One or two, I think. If, if that's my idea, if you want to do three or, I think everyone should do one. Yeah. And, yes. and maybe what we'll do is, is, um, is Mary still here? No, is maybe we'll, um, I'll give an informal update to the select board as to where we're at. And if, let me say, would people be comfortable with me sharing what I just shared and saying to people, this is not a decision, this was just a brainstorming session? Yes. Or would you rather that I wait? No, I think we, it's okay. Give them a little heads up. And tell them this, you know, we're now going to be considering this for a month and revising it. We'll yeah, come back yeah, to yeah. you again. But at least we can give them a flavor for what we've discussed tonight. Or, or is that premature? I, I think it's, I think okay. it's fine. Yeah. I, as good. long as you fun. correct the math. Uh, <laughs> correct the math and the spelling. Yeah. 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 Well, I know that there were higher standards in previous administrations. But. <laughs> All right. so, okay, so let's just go around and say, of, of these five, um, which one or two would you want? Uh, amenities and the uh, ERS, the grants, community grants. <coughs> okay, wait a minute, I have to do it differently. Amenities, sorry. Amenities, and community grants. Okay, all right, Joe? Um, improved physical amenities, and I think support business and business environment. Okay, uh, housing. I 
would like to do housing and I would be willing to fill in on a second one if there weren't enough. <coughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. The same thing. I, I'd like to do housing, and I hadn't even considered doing a, a second one. Well, you don't have to. But would, you okay. know, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Can, can, I, can I say that, that second choice is something I take as a second choice? You know what I'm saying? Can I? B business is, is clearly. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like, I mean, if you, I'm going to let okay. you all do what you want to do. Okay. Like, right. I don't think the chair has the right to. Okay. Anyway, it, it doesn't work. If you're not interested in it, so you're not going to. So, uh, it's really, we're really asking this question to figure out how many other people do we need, I think, to fill yeah, up. Yeah, sure. Courtney? Uh, definitely Margaret Woodstock, and um, I am interested in housing. I'm not sure if I'll jump in there, but it's, it's very important uh, to all of us. Okay, so and who are we missing? We're missing Mika? Julia. And Julia. Julia. And can, let's, can we just guess, just to see? So we've got people on every committee. Julia's on market Julia right would, now. And I think she would want to be on market. Sure. I'm not assigning it to her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure Mika would like housing. You think she would? Yeah. So housing is a big one. All right. So maybe I'll get off of that then. Okay. Um, do you think she would like housing? Okay. And so we don't have enough um, on business, and we don't have. A, we only have one on community grants. But then we have some community members. I know Barry is interested. I think. Yeah. I mean, I assume Barry is interested. Yeah. Okay. So business support is. I, I would, would think. Beth is probably wants to get involved with the the business and, and business environment. I mean, she does has a good job on well, the subcommittee of mine. But she I would also like, I, marketing Woodstock yeah. is yeah. Are there kind of my priority. Okay, so good. Okay, so I guess the point is that we don't have any pariah committees here. That basically there's at least someone interested. I think it's important on principle that there be at least one member of the EDC on each committee. Yes. Because um, yes. we've the ones that have like taken an oath. Um, I don't think that the EDC person has to be the chair. I do think we should have chairs mm -hmm. and make yeah. that kind of clear, but I don't think, or co-chairs, and I don't think it has to be the EDC person. I think all of these committees should have non-EDC people on them. Absolutely. And one of the things I think we should consider, not tonight, is like for example under housing, we should have a realtor, we should have a builder or a developer. You know, I would think. You know. Yeah. Okay. So good. So we've. Uh, are people comfortable that we've made some progress? And I can, or some of us, whoever, can report to the select board where we're at. Sure. And Absolutely. we'll continue the discussion uh, next at the next meeting. Yeah, and hopefully at the next meeting, I think we should be ready to form up the committees, finalize them, and then give send them off to each create their their one page. It, so two months from now we'll have four of these pages that have been considered. Is that a fair objective to, to sure. reach? Mm -hmm. Okay, give some thought to who in the committee, sorry. I was just thinking a cup of coffee, you know, yeah. clear morning, right. done. Exactly, <laughs> you just have to find that clear morning. And make sure it's in the morning. Yes. Okay, so could you just each think about who in the community you might think would add value given the topic area of the committees that you've done and Either keep your own list or send me an email or send Sally a, an email. Are you going to are you going to suggest like a number? Should we have no, a no. Minimum I think of three, a minimum no, of five. No, no, I think you all should okay. just decide. Okay. You know. Okay. Um, but I just think the concept of having non EDC members yes, and that's part, with specific yes. expertise, because I, I think there's a lot of work to do, and I don't, you know, to Sally's point about real projects when, you know. Yeah, you know, we're going to need a, a, a group of people that can divide up work and do real work. Yeah. And it's, it, going forward, it's these subcommittees that's going to really drive the, the work of the EDC. As, as to some extent, it has been already. The marketing committee is doing that work. The revitalization committee has been doing that work. Now it's going to be all of them that are doing it. Cool. Okay. All right. Um, I, I've taken up all of this time on this item number five because I thought that was really the most important thing. I, I would just, the, I think the only other thing Thing that we have to do, uh, we have to have a very brief executive session. The Teagle Landing request um, has been made for a, f can I just suggest that it fits in naturally into the amenities committee. <coughs> I, you know, it's probably on the list. I don't think at this point, because we're so close to having a committee like this and a plan, I don't think we should commit funds to it until we have these long-term plans, because maybe we can't afford to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, right now it's about cash. so what you're saying is, We'll hit this again in two months. Exactly. 
It, well, uh, well, unless, yes, I presume the amenities committee is going to put it on the list. Oh. Uh, argue strongly it's for it. It's small and maybe immediate. And sure. Yes, but we'll start to make these trade-offs okay. two months So later. we'll just keep it on hold, what we have. Does anyone object, object to that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I might, but... Yeah. Um, so no. <laughs> really, <laughs> I do, but... Yeah. Um, so is the revitalization committee a subcommittee of the amenities no. committee or have we gone away uh, no I, I think okay i think we need to decide and just the way sally said we can't assume that the existing committees will just morph into the new ones but i would recommend that the people that have been working on revitalization join the amenities committee that we add a few people to, that we as we look at the range of Project. So, so is it up to the existing uh, subcommittee to recruit additional members? Well, well that makes, but also, uh, there is, I mean, the, the Trails Committee, right. is, is, we've got a dozen people that have been working on that. So, and those folks are really interested in the trail. Right. So I think it's, has to yeah, I don't think we have to blow up. I, I think if, if in fact the physical amenities subcommittee was in fact two teams, that would be okay as long as as long as we can put as long as we can have maybe one meeting of the two teams that kind of lay out this kind of vision and list of projects and and then it can continue to operate. Why would we need two teams? Why well, you well, don't, don't need it just because you have it. trails committee people do no, but the one. trails committee they they elect one or two people to come in and talk to yeah. that committee yeah. and yeah. and present what they've been. I'm not trying to create a big bu bureaucracy here. I just think we need to organize, you know, a, a little bit, Jeff. I've saved my yes. own talk. <laughs> you can, you can be I silent just, no just, longer. I can't I'll be silent any longer. I just want to point out that when it comes to Teagle Landing, and uh, if you're putting that off, even to do the most basic rehabilitation so it's safe we don't have a lawsuit on our hands, I would suggest that uh, you be open to not putting this off to basically, you're talking about a year away. If you put this whole thing off to two, to two months, and then after that we're getting out of the building season. Right now, the $10,000 that's committed, 5000 from the trustees, 5000 from the EDC, it turns out, with, after the work's been done, is not enough to even finish the stairs and railing, which would make it safe, not alone complete the project that Joe would fill you in on. So how is it possible that there could be a little flexibility to at least uh, have that Teagle's Te 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 Landing possibly uh, have a little more money than that? But here's the thing. I say a month, say a month, from, say a month from now. Kind of speculating <coughs> once again, you got, and something like this, and probably this is something we're not really talking about right now, correct? I mean, what? But but this but I'm, if you're gonna, you gotta know the number. You gotta get an estimate of what it's gonna take before we right. have we a have discussion it. about. We it. have it. We we. Yeah. But we then all of a sudden it's like okay, but they nearly has it. What was that money given for? The ten grand. Exactly. What was exactly? Oh, given I can for? tell you exactly what the ten grand was given for. It was given for the railing and the stairs. To and make it, wasn't it safe, money. No, not to do what the revitalization committee wants to do as a bigger picture. Uh, yeah, right, right. But no, it, I'm just but saying. But bad. even the stairs. Right. Turns out, cost more than w once we got the uh, the estimates. This, was, this is my point, right there. Right, so, right. We didn't receive yeah. a lot of estimates before making that grant award. H how much? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But the, you you know told what? us to go back and and do what we've done. Exactly. Right. So. And that was I, at the last. Right. actual I, meeting so we I, did our due diligence I think what Beth is alluding to is that the wheels on this specific project had been turning for a long time yeah I mean it and we have been working on it for long. I think it was two meetings ago we asked for the five grand to to match the uh, the trustees money that was two months ago and since then and then at that meeting if my memory serves me correct is well why don't you guys do it right yeah. and get it done the way it should be get done? And everybody agreed, and so that's what we did. And we yeah. all spoke no. with Jack. But what I'm saying is, so to stop that right now and say, well, you know what? We'll bring it up again in two months. Well, if we bring it up again in two months, that means we're going to wait till next year before we do it. But the the, the what big project? 
I think that there are two, there are two, sorry, let me step back. This, I mean, is, exactly, this is exactly, this is, we're right at the turning point. Right. right. You know, if we, if we don't spend the money now, I, I can tell you right now that we're not going to do economic development if we approve projects and say, if we don't spend the money now, we have to wait till next year. That's the old way of thinking. I'm not saying we shouldn't fix the stairs right now, or even that we shouldn't spend the money. I'm just pointing out the fact yeah. when you're in a situation where you need four and a half million, you only have 1.75 million, you don't give money to projects that say that. Right. That's not how it works. You give right. money to projects that. <laughs> this is why I was talking about it's a change, change in thinking. Right. So let's just from a and and we're not there yet. We're imagining that we're going to get there. We're hoping we're going to get there, but we're not there at nine ten tonight. So fair enough. We're in this middle ground. If this yes. if this project has been proposed. Right now, then you say, yeah, you know that's a good idea, but let's wait on. It. But it hasn't. It was proposed a long time ago, and we've been working on a lot. But it, I understand. But it was proposed at a time when there when there was more money than projects. Right. And we're just about to be at a place where there's more projects than money. Right. And so well, good pro projects that are good, well researched, well documented, strongly supported by community are not going to get done. Just like and that's else. what's going. That's what it means. To have come up, there's been better discussions about how to manage ourselves, and all of a sudden they start changing things. I, I, I'm all for the change. Yeah, yeah. I am. I think this Next is great. Time. Restructuring, <laughs> right? I mean, it's great. But in this particular case, you know, this, as I said before, the wheels have been turning for a long time. Let me ask you a question. Go the, ahead. It sounds like that there are two parts to the yeah. Landing. One is, doing the stairs and the railings right that fits into the future and then there's the rest of it. Right. How much does it cost to do the stairs and the railings right? Okay. Just the okay. stairs and the railings. Give me one second. Got, give me do one people second. mind if we no, drive this to conclusion it, or try to? $19,500 is the... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Is the, the stairs and the handrail and guardrail is another $8,000. That's a over 27. The, so yes, minus 10. 10. Minus 10. And, and we have 10. Right. Right, right, right. But I mean, as, but you told us that you, you thought it would be 10, and now it's going to be 27. Yeah. Okay. We didn't. We didn't know what it was. The trustees had a limited number, and we said, let's throw this towards the stairs. We're worried about the stairs. The EDC was agreed to match that, and then this committee has been working on the, the reality numbers to make it not only safe but attractive in the long run right. yeah. and uh, and jack rossi's come up with real numbers now and that's the number so I, I, I think what <coughs> john is, is driving here getting towards let's do the stairs and the railings now we can do well, well for sure i don't no, that's i really think that's how no, i was i understand also. i don't think there's any argument for doing so that's 17.5 is that right, right. yes you, it, so you're asking for 75. additional money on top of money already. can the village put in additional money we don't have any additional money why did the village put in five thousand dollars for something? We had that cost the, the voters had budgeted yeah. five thousand for what for beautification. Oh yeah, that was it. it was and we threw a hundred percent of it to this. But this is this estimate is by one person. This is not up to. I board. haven't got. I haven't. No, not up to the estimate. estimate. No, no, not up to bid. But it so was if it, if we had received the bids for the proposed work before, we would have known the number. What? Yes. If there was a project <coughs> that was fully described for the improvements yeah, no. to be made to Tiba Landing, and then that was put yeah, out to three different board. contractors well, to submit bids on it, we would actually board. have a firm number. Mm -hmm. And right now, we still don't have a firm number. We just have an estimate from Jack. No, no it's, it's an estimate part. from a contractor. This is everything in labor. Okay, yes. So there's just one contractor. That's one contractor. One. And, the and as far as the, the bidding <laughs> process goes, I had discussed that with Phil more than once. And he said, don't worry about it, I'll cover it. It won't be a problem. Because I did say to him, I said, you know, some of the stuff's going to cost more than five grand. <coughs> he said, oh, we can, work out. we can work that out. Don't worry about it. Uh, would behoove yeah. us have three different bids? Do what? I'm sorry? Would behoove us have three different bids on yes. the project? If it's over five grand. What? This is. This is clearly this. This. OK. Yeah. But well, we don't have. We don't necessarily have to wait two months. Is there? Can can we? Can we firm up? I know that people have been working on it in a long time, but still, it doesn't feel. You know, especially 
can we firm this up so that we have multiple bids and so forth yes. and make a decision next month? Yes, we can get Th that. That will, that will not cause a one year delay? No. I don't think so. Uh, I think that still is enough construction season. I think if, if I was imagining myself on the amenities committee, Teagle's Landing has to be one of the higher priority things. It's going to be a, a relatively smaller project. I can imagine doing it earlier to have a, you know, a, I think the payback. The, the chances that it gets knocked off are moderate of the final list, but but it's not a, you know, I mean, it's, it's one of the mainstream projects I think that the amenities committee is likely to, in my opinion. So I don't feel, if, if we had solid numbers, then we knew that we were getting the proper deal and it was properly constructed proposal, I wouldn't have a major problem doing $17,000 next month. Uh, how do other people feel about it? I think it's great. It's also knocking something off the list. You know, if you, right. if partially you this, off the list. Right. You know, yeah, I'm proud of that. I just like to see, make sure. All right. And just because I do this all the time, if we get three bids and if somebody else who's just as good as offering twenty-two thousand dollars, we just save six thousand dollars to do product we can use for something else. What what the you whole say? product's twenty-eight thousand dollars. Right? right? Am I not right? Yeah. So somebody if you go out for three bids, three different companies to look at built doing the work. Yes. And one of them comes at a twenty two and you got one at twenty eight and the other one's reputable just the same. Who are you gonna choose? So I'm just saying we need to we need to do the we need to get yeah. a couple more bids. So, so as long as it's all apples to apples. So yeah. Can we do that? Get more bids. Yeah. Get more bids. Is this a, is this a bid? Is it the yes. This is a bid. We have one yeah. bid. Yeah. So this right. is an actual. Right. Yeah. So, so I think what we're saying is let's get two more bids, and and then and then come back to us with the proposed with with the bids and the rationale for selecting the bidder for just the stairs and the railings. And it seems like the sense. Uh, I'm not sure I would vote for it, but I'm in the minority, and it seems like the general consensus is that he would approve it What's that in next month. We're not promising, right? But is that? I mean, it's very people. Okay, yeah. so come back to us next month. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there any other old business or new business? Yeah. We have to do. We have to go into executive session. Right. Is there anything other than that? Uh, by the way, I've skipped over the coordinator's report is in there. Ms. Sally has always does a very good job of so forth. I mentioned I think the key issue of the financial report is that we um, we hit our forecast actually it was incredibly close. It was like within a thousand dollars, and um, and the growth looks pretty good this year. So. The only okay. question I had on the coordinator's report, do we, Ms. Sally, do we know that what the legal structure is of um, the Optimist Center? Uh, Thanks, Jeff. Travis. Um, he okay. still owns the business. He owns the business, so this new person is an employee the business. Yeah. of the business. He's the Travis owner. is back in town, yeah. running yeah. the business. Travis? Travis? Yes, today. he is. No, he's in town for a week. No, he's, he's not. not. He's in town for a year. I spoke to him this morning. I'm sorry. My first meeting is running late. I spoke with him this morning. He's back in town for a year. His wife is in Mongolia. Okay. He plans on going out there in a week or so for a short visit, coming back. And well, this, this is all news. What's his name? Sebastian? He's working with Travis. Yeah. He was just at Sweet and Salty today. Oh, Travis. Travis or Sebastian? Travis. Travis. Oh, wow. Okay. I had a long conversation with Travis last week, and this is not what he told me. Okay. All right, great. And I spoke with him. Okay. So, Macy, what happens when we go? So, do we need to make a motion to go into executive yeah. session? We do, and for what purpose? So, I would move that we go into executive session session to discuss personnel matters. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we are now in executive session.